kicking with the wind at their back. Over on the far side, Maurice Harris. Here on the near side, Mickey Jones. And the middle return man at the goal line is going to be Whitaker. With that wind at his back, he has kicked it to the goal line a yard deep. Mickey Jones to the 5 10. They're closing on him, dragging him down at about the 14 yard line. Started that one at the goal line about a yard deep, but then brings it out to the 14. Good coverage on the kickoff team. It was a nice high kick, and he had to wait for a moment. They got down there in a hurry, so the Aggies will start at their own 14. We'll be watching field position. Mike Weir again is the referee for this Big 12 crew, and here comes Mark Ferris trotting out on the field. Ferris now in the, uh, for the season has passed for a total of 437 yards, hitting 61% of uh, his passes. Toombs will start at the fullback. The Aggies open up in an eye, and Whitaker will be the tailback. Aggies have Roderick Broughton starting at the tight end. Play action, drops back at the five under pressure. Got away from a man. He's at the goal line. He throws to Toombs, caught it at the 20, and falls forward to the 22-yard line. Under a lot of pressure, Ferris to Toombs. Pick up about seven. It will be sucking down at three coming. Ferris looking nimble there as he avoided the rush, and I like the throw because he had to throw back across his body. Toombs is coming across, but he was right on the hash mark. Ferris outside of it was able to get it complete for about seven yards. Toombs just caught his fourth pass of the uh, season. That went good for seven yards out of a shotgun now. Whitaker lines up to the left of Ferris. He stands the uh, 17 inside handoff. He'll hand off to Whitaker. We're going to lose a yard on that one. And just didn't materialize as he started out from his right, cut it back to his left, went right in behind the center, Seth McKinney, and got back to the line of scrimmage. So now we're going to face a third down. The Aggies need their 25. This is the opening possession of the ball game. Be very difficult to run against this style of defense, this scheme, because they stack so many people on the line of scrimmage. You'll see the Aggies try to spread them out when they run the ball most of the time tonight. Well, you got the triplets over here. You got Johnson, Taylor, and Ferguson on the left side. Drops back out of a shotgun, throws. Bethel Johnson caught it at the line of scrimmage and is driven back across the 20 where they fumble the ball, but they're going to give him forward progress to the line of scrimmage, and uh, UTEP holds on that first possession. We end up now getting about a yard on that last play. It will face fourth down and two, and punt time coming up. Cody Skates, 11 kicks, a 41.2 average. Had a 38-7 average last week. The opening game against Notre Dame on eight kicks, 42-1. Kicked only three times in the ball game against Wyoming. His long this season has been 52. He's kicking into the win. Prince Clemens has been returning some of these kicks. We'll check that in a moment as we get the opportunity. It is Clemens. Good punt. Taken at the UTEP 28. Here comes the return. Back to the 35. Trying to get to the 40. He'll be drawn down there by Jason Glenn at the 42-yard line. And that punt was good for 48 yards. So a 48-yard punt to start the night for Cody Skates and Davey kicked that one into a, about a 10 to 15 mile per hour north wind, kicking with the wind at his face. Outstanding kick by Cody Skates, and he's got just such a strong leg. Good rush by UTEP that time, but he got it off. You heard a reaction from the crowd, and that reaction was to what looked to me like a, a clipping penalty against our, our sprint guy. They didn't see it. And uh, UTEP will have good field position at the 42. Rocky Perez is their quarterback. He's under his center. They uh, come out with two tight ends. A single setback is Cleveland. They're going to try a uh, reverse coming back this way. Now they look like they wanted to throw the ball. Cleveland has it. And he will get make that maze out to the 46-yard line. Cleveland took the ball, went uh, to the far side, handed off to Mays coming back this way. Mays cocked his arm, Dave. I thought he was going to throw for a moment. And eventually gets it out to about the 45 and a half. It's going to be second down and about six coming for UTEP. This was a reverse with the option pass. You had uh, Alan Ray going deep on that pattern. It was well covered. And so Mays tucked it under and ran with it and picked up about four. They bring in the fullback, Porter. They got a wide out each side of the ball, and they hand off to Cleveland. Hits the middle, flag down. I think they're going to give UTEP for a holding. They pick up a first down across the 50 to the Aggie 47. There's a flag back at the UTEP 44 on the handoff to Rovan Cleveland. 6-1-220, a freshman redshirt out of California. He carried 10 times at 105 yards against SMU. Rub it out. A hold, apparently, against UTEP. You called it, Dave. Just what you'd expect when you see a flag thrown in that general vicinity hey, and that quickly. Offense. And they'll mark off yard. this penalty. 
10-yard penalty will take it back uh, inside the UTEP 36-yard line, set up a second and third. Well, they have 377 yards of total offense on average in their first two. That's the good news. The bad news, they've been giving up 453 yards average in the first two ball games. Sun says 16, line of scrimmage is the 36-yard line. UTEP's end of the field. Hash right, single setback, and it's play action. They're going to throw out here at the flats. The tight end will make the catch at the 40. Goes out of bounds immediately. Brian Natkin. That'll be his 10th reception of the season. And he got minimal yardage there. It'll bring up second down still. We're going to say about 12 to go third down at about 12 coming up. And they'll play action pass uh, with the, the action going back to the left. And Perez rolls back out to the right. Natkin, the only one out in the flat in the pattern. He'll pick up about, uh, about four yards. It's still third and 12. That was the 118th career reception for Natkin. Shotgun running back either side of the quarterback Perez has it drops back steps up throws up in the middle caught by the tight end wide open across mid the Aggie 38 yard line goes Brian Natkin 6'4 245 that goes 22 yards he was a man alone between the hash marks just ran straight up the field Dave nobody there he split the defenders and Perez sighted him quickly, delivered the ball quickly, and it goes 22 yards there in Aggie territory inside the 40-yard line. First down and 10 at the Aggie 38. Favors the hash mark to the left. Empty of the backfield, shotgun for Perez. Has it, drops back at the 45, steps up, throws again, and the ball is incomplete. They tried to get that to Natkin, would have been enough for a first down. Good defensively, Brian Gamble fighting that ball away from that big tight end. And that's no uh, no easy job for Brian Gamble to, to fight that big tight end for the ball, but he was able to get it out of his hands and let it drop on the turf. As a matter of fact, it looked like it was almost picked off by another Aggie who was standing right next to him, but uh, it fell to the turf second and ten. Perez has been intercepted twice. He's hit 55% of his passes coming into the game tonight. He's under center with a single setback. Two wides either side of the ball. Has it. And it's a draw to the backfield. That'll go to Sherman Austin. He's got a first down as he fights across the 30. Well, let's see who the mark's going to be. May not have gotten it. He may be about a half yard shy. They're going to end up facing third down and very short. And the officials will have to bring the chains out. Cornelius Anthony made the stuff. And from this vantage point, Dave, it looks like they're going to be a little bit short. They came into the ball game tonight. 7-5 a game, giving up 25-5 a game. Dave, this was a great call. This draw play ended up going right where the blitz was coming from. It came underneath the blitz, so that left them shorthanded. The Aggies a little shorthanded on that. And uh, just a good call for that particular defense. It will pick up about nine and a half. They're going to be just a few inches short of the first down. Ball club for the Miners last year in 1999. They won five. They lost seven. They were three and four in the whack. There are two games this year. They've lost to OU 55 to 14. They beat SMU in El Paso by a score of 37 to 20. So now they face third down and very short. Got 11-01 to go in the first, no score. Aggies punted on their first possession without getting a first down. And now they have uh, driven from their side of the 50 into Aggie territory, just shy of the 28. Perez under center is going to sneak for it, and he will pick up apparently the first down. So Rocky Perez, six foot two hundred, a senior, three letters out of San Antonio Holmes, is making his 17th career start. Dave, he's passed for 2,850 career yards coming into the ball game tonight. Uh, the Aggie coaches have great respect for Perez and great respect for this. These guys have a lot of athletes. 10.42 to go, first down and 10 for UTEP. No score in the ball game there at the Aggie, 28. Single, uh, empty in the backfield, out of a shotgun. Perez steps up again, throws, has his man Mays. He's going to be close for a first down across near the Aggie, 17. That's the first reception for Lee Mays. He's number 17 this week in NCAA receiving. And for uh, the 1999 season, how good is this guy? He caught 60 for 881 yards. First down, UTEP, 
first and ten turns into another first and ten. Outstanding recognition by both Mays and Perez. It's a zone coverage with a three-man rush, and Mays found the open spot in the zone, and Perez hit him for another first down. They moved the ball well against OU, but then turned it over inside the 20 a couple of times. First and ten at the 18, on the ground, the 15. Sherman Austin will carry across the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Austin is a small guy, 5'8", 170, a sophomore, one letter out of California. Appeared in 10 games last year with no stats. But you saw on that run, great quickness. He found a hole up the middle, picked up almost five, and as we told you before the game, they'll run the ball right at the Aggies and with some success. They need the ball uh, to the seven for a first down. It's second down and six. 9.39 to go, no score. UTEP's first possession. The Aggies punted on their first possession. Single setback, offset in the backfield. Perez drops back, steps up, is going to try to rumble the ball. He does. Dives for the first down. He has it at the six-yard line. First and goal for UTEP at the Aggie, six and a half. Well, Perez is not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and run the option. He doesn't have that kind of, of running ability, but he is mobile enough that he can escape the rush, and if you give him a hole in the middle, he can pick up enough to pick up a first down, just as he did here on the seven-yard line at first and goal. Ryan Gamble came off the field just now, and we've said Jared Morris said at one of those inside linebacking positions, it looked like he was favoring his left shoulder. Here's the play on first and goal. Play action, throw, caught, touchdown, and just like that, UTEP's got the lead. They hit the tight end, Joy Knapp, a junior out of Fort Worth, Halton, 6-0. It's UTEP with the lead at 9.06 to go in the first. Well, that's the same play we saw back around midfield. It's that play action pass with all the action going back to the left and then a bootleg out to the right. The only receiver out was Knapp. He was wide. It looked like uh, Jason to contain the quarterback and the touchdown by UTEP. Drive started at the uh, UTEP 42 after a nice little uh, punt return. 9.06 to go. Here is the extra point. It's on its way. And it is good. Just like that, the lead will go to UTEP at 7 to nothing with 9.06 to go on the first. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. This is the uh, Texas Aggie Radio Network. First possession by UTEP. They get it on a punt at their own 42. 10 plays, 58 yards. The big play, a 22-yard completion from Perez to Natkin on a third and 12 situation. Moved it down to the A&M 38-yard line. The touchdown comes on a six-yard play action pass to tight end Joey Knapp. And UTEP leads it 7 to nothing at the 9.06 mark. All right, the Aggies are awaiting the uh, kickoff from UTEP. Again, they got the wind at their back. Middle return man at the goal line is Whitaker here on the near side. That's Nicky Jones again. I think it's still Maurice Harrison. Coming back this way, Whitaker two yards deep. Back to the 5, to the 10, out to the 15. He's at the 20, 25, 26, 27-yard line. We'll go, Whitaker. About two yards deep, brings it out across the 25, so a better start this time. We added it at the 14 on our first possession. Now the Aggies will get it at about the 26 and a half. We'll call it the 26-yard line. This broadcast is brought to you in part by the train company. Like the fight in Texas Aggies, it's hard to stop a train. A&M went one, two, three, and punted on their first possession. That's what we do here. We'll start with an eye formation. Ferris moves in under center. The running backs, Toombs leads it, and Whitaker behind him. Tight end on the right side of the formation. That's Lonnie Madison. The handoff on an end around. Coming back this way to Goins. Has the 25. Has the 30. Bunched up. Bounces out of some tacklers at about the 32. And carries for a first down outside the 37-yard line on the end around to Dwayne Goins. Boy, he got hammered, but he showed some great quickness and some great balance. He got right on the button, but they didn't wrap him up. It bounced him back a little bit, but he kept his feet and was able to go forward and pick up the first down all the way out past the 37-yard line. Seven to nothing. UTEP with 8.47 to go. Shouldn't be lost on us now that going senior year rushed for 1,589 yards on 173 carries. Shotgun, three wides to the right, two on the left. 
empty of the backfield, throw it out in the flats, caught by Bethel, behind the line, he's fighting for a first down, drug down from behind as he crosses the 45 and goes to the 46 on the A&M side of the 50. We'll end up about a yard and a half shy of the yardage needed for a first down, so it'll be second and very short at the 8.30 mark in the first. Well, the Aggies giving UTEP a number of looks in this possession. First of all, they go with an I formation and pick up the first down. This one, they go empty. They've got five receivers out in the pattern and nine yards. They are a minus two on turnovers. The Aggies are even in that department. Into the ball game. Second down, very short. Ferris turns and says something to his running bucks. And now he hands off, uh, and it is Whitaker, and he's caught behind the line. We're going to lose two yards back outside, or inside our 45 at the 44. We had a little chicken fight going on across the 50 near the UTEP 45-yard line. So now the Aggies will face third down. They're going to need three on this third down play as we lose back to the uh, 44. Robert Ferguson hustling on every play was down trying to get a block in case this uh, the play busted up the middle. Of course it didn't, but he was chicken fighting with the cornerback. All right, the line of scrimmage now, the 44. The Aggies need a little more than three on this third down. 7.29 to go. This play will start from a shotgun with a running back to the left. Got a good block on the corner from Whitaker. Looking to throw. Now he does. Caught. And it is enough for a first down at midfield by Bethel Johnson. Johnson now will be spotted out at the UTEP 49. So the Aggies convert and go to a first down at the 7.19 mark in the first and 7 nothing UTEP. Has. Once again, great patience and great composure by quarterback Mark Ferris. Bethel Johnson with his safety valve. He, had, he was stationed with just enough in, in a situation where he had just enough to pick up the first down. Mark wanted more, but he ended up picking up the first down with Bethel. Ferguson is a flanker way out to the right side. We've not gone in his direction. Split in on this side is Taylor. Ferguson went in motion out of the eye. They hand off. Whitaker, big hole up the middle at the 40, and he's tripped up as he hits the 40, and he goes forward to the UTEP 38. First down, Texas A&M. Well, that's the complimentary play to the first play of this possession, and that was, of course, the first down picked up by Goins on the reverse. They fake the reverse and hand it to Whitaker up front. Big hole opens up, and he moves it down inside the 40-yard line to the 38, first and 10. This broadcast brought to you in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. First and 10, operating at the UTEP 38-yard uh, line, hash left, I formation. And they put more, uh, Ferguson in motion again. A handoff, Ferguson in here and right into the back of one of his linemen down there, right into the back of Michael Mahan and went down. Mahan gets the uh, tackle, and it will be second down coming up. And that was a repeat play. Take the reverse to Goins and then hand it off to Whitaker. It worked so well on the previous play. They tried it again. It'll pick up two. 6.35 to go. It'll be second down and eight. The Aggies need to net the UTEP 28-yard line. It favors Hash to the left, two wide right, one here to the left. Second down and about eight to go. Put a man in motion. Goins. Drop back across the 40. Now throw it. Caught out of the backfield. that would be the tight end. And uh, it'll be... Torrey across the 25, out of bounds at the 22. First down, Texas A&M. And that, I think, Dave, will be the first tight end that has caught a pass this season, Michael Delatore. Yeah, it was a little crossing route. You send all your receivers deep, and when that man-to-man -man coverage, it clears out the middle, and then Delatore runs the crossing route. He's only three or four yards deep. Easy throw for Ferris, and a big run after the catch all the way down to the 22. Two wides on the top and one here on the bottom. Single setback, and I think that's still Whitaker under center is Ferris. It's first and 10. The Aggies trail. Here is Whitaker, the handoff. 20. He's at the 10. Trips forward to the seven yard line. First and goal, AM. And the clock stops at 5.50 to go here at the first. And the Miners lead the Aggies 7 zip. Oh, Richard Whitaker is unhappy with himself. He thought he should have taken this one to the end zone. There was a player that was blocked down on the ground and just got a hold of his ankle. And that's what uh, kept him from going the distance. But he does get it inside the 10 down to the 7. First and goal for the Aggies. On this drive now, we've thrown it three times, and we've run it eight times, or five times out of the eight plays. This is the ninth play. Two wides left on first and goal at the UTEP seven. Single setback, handoff, almost fell in the backfield. Now caught. Now they're going to give him the six-yard line. That'll be Whitaker to the six. It'll be second and goal for the Aggies at the UTEP six. This broadcast is brought to you in part by the Association of Former Students. We are the Aggie Network.
Clock rolling at the 5-12 mark now. Dave South along with Dave Elmendorf. We expect a crowd of 65,000 or better for this one tonight. Great night for football in the Brazos Valley. Ferguson away to the top. He's outside that high hash mark. Tied in here on the left. Two tight ends, an eye formation. Lead back is Toombs. We're going to throw the ball. Go to Ferguson. And with a man all over him, he caught it for a touchdown. And I think they're going to call defensive pass interference. The Aggies will decline, and the Aggies then will kick an extra point. And if they're good on the extra point, tie the ball again. Well, it's a quick slant pattern to Ferguson. One of the things I talked with Steve Cragthorpe about before the ball game is how Ferguson has, uses his size and with great body control can get his body between the defender and the quarterback. And it's almost impossible to stop the play if the ball is thrown like this one was right in the bread basket. Touchdown for Ferguson. The official website for the Aggies. Get the story from AggieAthletics.com. Here's Terrence Kitchens. He is 7 of 7 on his extra points. And for his career, he is 38 out of 38. Holder is Wes Bonovich. Waiting for it. Here it comes. Deep snappers. Chance Pierce. It's good. Game is tied at 7 here in College Station tonight. Brian 800, your locally owned and operated authorized Verizon wireless agent, formerly GTE Wireless. Thanks to Brian 800 for our two-way communications on these broadcasts. Aggies and UTEP are tied at the 449 mark of the first. This is Texas Aggie football. Both teams then have scored on a six-yard pass in the ball game to get the scoring underway. Cody Skates has kicked off the return man. Sherman Austin takes it at the two, starts up the middle. He runs right into about one, two, three, four, five Aggies. And then he's like a magnet. They're all clashing together at the 18-yard line. Man, alive. I don't know who that was, but he was a missile. He, that's, uh, that's showing no regard for your body whatsoever. He just went in there and full speed, full tilt, hit the ball carrier. Man, what a lick. Here we go, first down and uh, 10 for UTEP. They have the ball at their own 19-yard line. Rocky Perez, a senior out of San Antonio Holmes, making his 17th career start, is the uh, quarterback for the Miners. These two have not played since the 1984 season. And it was a uh, down-to-the-wire ball game. Drops back across the 15th, throwing deep sideline. He overthrows the intended receiver, Mays, with coverage there from the uh, Aggies. It'll be shot on Weston. He was trying to get it to Mays down around the Aggie. 40 goes in complete. So now second down and 10 with 4.34 to go here in the first quarter. Sean Weston showing the ability to cover one-on-one -on -one and stick with a very, very slick receiver and very, very quick receiver. Ball was just a little overthrown, but perfect coverage for Weston. Let's give Jared Morris credit for that lick on the kickoff, and it was a dandy. Wes Bonovich in the lineup right now for the Aggies. At safety position. Perez is on the center. Hands off. Austin going wide to the left. The Aggies have him contained. He'll pick up about three yards, maybe four, as he gets it across the 20. And he goes out officially at about the 24, maybe 23-yard line. At the 23, they'll face a third down coming up. They will need about six. They need to net their 29 for a first down. Coming into the ball game right now, Jay Brooks for the Aggies defensively. The Aggies will go to a nickel setup here. Let's see. Have a defensive lineman coming out of the ball game. That's Ty Warren coming out for the Aggies here on the sideline. Weston at the corner here on this side. Bonovich stays in. That's Sammy Davis over on the far side. Out of the shotgun, drop back, throw the ball over the head of the intended receiver. Good coverage there. Pete Terrence Keel on the coverage. The intended receiver was Sherman Austin. The Aggies will hold and have a chance here to get good field position. 426 to go on the first game tied at seven. Now the Miners went empty once again. They had all of their people out uh, as receivers. The Aggies countered with a nickel coverage and were able to, uh, to blanket uh, Sherman Austin in the flat. And they'll get the ball back here with the game tied at seven. Chris Taylor and Mickey Jones are the return men. They're both standing at about a hash mark each at the 35-yard line. The punter is Glenn Beard. It's not a very good kick. Almost got one of the Aggies in the middle of the back, and that's going to be picked up by Mickey at the 40, and he retreats back to the 36-37-yard line. They're going to spot him at the 39. 
The punt from Beard, he is good for 40 yards. His average coming into the ball game tonight, 11 kicks for a 43.2. So we have 4.13 to go here in the first quarter. And Texas A&M and UTEP are tied at seven. I think we're in formation. Toombs at the fullback. Joe Weber has checked in at the tailback position. Weber has carried nine for 23 against Notre Dame. Seven for 29 last week against Wyoming. Had a reception in that ball game against Wyoming. First and 10, A&M at their 39 after Mickey Jones got about four or five on a little quick punt return. Drops back after play action. There's Toombs, he caught it at the 40. Lowries his head, carries his hand with him across midfield. And uh, together they go down at the UTEP 46 and they grasp up DJ Walker who brought Toombs down but not before he carries for about what, 14, 15 yards on the reception to Jamar. Jamar has been such a, a good team player uh, this year. He's back at that fullback position after playing tailback last year. He's blocking well. He showed great hands here, catching the ball and taking it inside UTEP territory for the first. Weber stayed in there at that tailback position he has. Young man out of San Bernardino Pacific High School. Put a man in motion. Now it goes to Weber. Lead block. Turn in the corner. 40. He's got a chance. That man can't catch him. 20. Tripped up from the backside as they both go across the 20. And they'll spot him down. Shy of the 15. There goes Joe Weber. And he carries for 30 yards. Boy, a nice bounce outside. And he was gone. It was Krantz Clemens that was in chase. He's a cornerback that can play man-to-man. -man. He's one of the few guys on the field that can catch Joe Weber from behind. But what a nice run all the way down to the 16. Taylor's in at a receiving spot. There goes Goins way out to the right side. The tight end on the right side is Michael Delatore. Got a reception of the ball game tonight. It's first down and 10 for the Aggies at the 16. Game tied at 7. It's an end around. Now it's a handoff. Weber! And he's broken outside. 5. And he's close. Did he get in? Yes. He did. Touchdown! He went down in the grasp of a defender for UTEP as they hit the goal line. TD Joe Weber. And it's his first touchdown of the year. You, you've got to love this offense that Steve Cragthorpe installed here at Aggieland. That's the third different play that they've run off of that end around. They run the end around, they run the fullback up the middle, and now they run the tailback outside, and this one good for a touchdown. He ran for 46 yards on those two carries, one for 30. That last one's a 16-yard touchdown run. Here's Kitchens trying to make it 40 out of 40 on his extra points for his career. Bonavich the holder. Chance Pierce is the deep snapper, the extra point. Put it on the board, make it a 14-7 Aggie lead with 3.15 to go in the first quarter here at Kyle Field tonight. This is Texas Aggie football. Hey, the Aggies are about ready to kick off. Here is Cody Skates again approaching the ball. This is a nice one. Has a chance it will get into the end zone. They're going to take the knee. Let's go down on the field with the Aggies up here by a 14 to 7 count with 3.10 to go in the first quarter. Here's Tom Turbyville. Yeah, Dave, a report from the AM bench. Michael Mahan, the offensive lineman, has come out of the game with a slight concussion, but they say that he should be able to come back into the ball game. So that's good news. His backup is Andre Brooks. Dave, a recap on that drive by the Aggies. Well, it was a short drive following a punt. The Aggies got it at their 39. Three plays. They threw a pass to Toons, and they turned it over to Joe Weber, a 30-yard run to the left, and then a 16-yard run to the right for the touchdown. Aggies lead it 14-7 at the 315 mark of the first quarter. High formation. Porter will be the fullback. Cleveland is the tailback. Perez under center goes to Cleveland, tries the middle, caught behind the line, and dropped for about a two-yard loss. First man to get through and make the hit. Stephen Young in at that nose tackle position. Well, great penetration by Stephen Young. He just took his man with him back into the backfield and just disrupted the timing of this play designed to go up the middle. It'll lose two. Nothing shabby about these drives tonight. UTEP scores on a 58-yard drive. The Aggies now have scored on their last two possessions, 73 yards and 61 yards. Second down and 12, 237 to go on the first. and has got a 14-7 lead over UTEP from an eye. Drop back at the 10, step up into the pocket, going to run for it at the 20. Caught from the backside of the 24, Rocky Perez. 
One of those making that stop will be Royal and Bradley. By the way, Brian Campbell is back out on the field. Checking into the lineup now for the Aggies will be Ty Warren. Also coming into the game will be Jay Brooks. And they'll go to that nickel coverage. And on this play, the secondary had such good coverage, Perez couldn't locate anybody. He saw a hole open up in the middle. The Aggies closed on it quickly, and it'll only pick up four yards. Flemons and Young check out of the lineup for the Aggies on third down, and we'll say six. Ball just a little past the 24-yard line. 155 to go in the first out of the and a sack coming up here. Perez is caught and dropped back inside the 20. And he is dropped by Jason Glenn coming in from that outside linebacking position here on the left side. And they dropped him back at the 15. It'll be punt time for UTEP. Brian Natkin, the tight end, may be a great receiver, but he missed a block here. He was supposed to protect against that linebacker blitz. Jason Glenn ran right by him and got the sack, forcing UTEP into this punting situation. Glenn Beard, his first punt went 40 yards. Our return men for the Aggies on the near side. That's Mickey, and he's at the 47. Jones, Taylor at the top at the Aggie 48. Good uh, punt backing up. Taylor takes it at the 40, dropped it. Now looking for a block coming back this way. Caught, and he is calf roped right there at the 45-yard line. So we got a timeout, or are we going to get a timeout? 42 on the punt, and the Aggies now will have it at their own 46-yard line with 104 showing on the clock now. And the Aggies a 14-7 lead. They have scored now on their last two possessions, and we'll keep it here at Kyle Field. Break the huddle now and come to the line of scrimmage. Favors hash mark to the uh, top side. I'll make sure. Let's see if that's Andre Brooks in for Michael Mahan. It is. Seth McKinney out over the ball from a shotgun with three wides on the left, one on the right, standing at the 40. Drop back, throw it high, caught by Bethel Johnson. Cuts through two men and gets about a yard. He could have been caught behind the line. Uh, it was Krantz Clements who had a shot at him and missed the tackle. And then ended up getting about a yard out of that. He'll carry the ball to about the Aggie 48. It'll be second down at nine. The clock shows 45 seconds. saying it leads 14 to seven. Now the Aggies going empty again um, on that possession and hitting the ball and throwing the ball quickly to Bethel Johnson. He did do a good job of picking up that one yard. Could have been a loss. Dago McCauley is the uh, tackle on this side. Andre Brooks on the other side. With Derek Broughton in at the tight end. Man in motion will be Ferguson. And they hand the ball off to uh, Whitaker, dancing behind the line. Gets maybe a yard to the 48-yard line. So that'll be third down. We picked up about two yards on our first two uh, carries here on this possession. Here comes Lonnie Madison out on the field. Taylor started out. Now he's coming back in. Down to nine seconds, down to eight seconds. And we made let time run out and get that wind at our back. Down to four, down to three. We're going to go to the second quarter, and the Aggies are leading UTEP in College Station tonight by a score of 14 to 7. Second quarter coming up. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. And then we'll have third down and eight on the first play to start the second quarter. They've got the win now at their back. Aggies show a shotgun as they come out of the huddle. Running back either side of Ferris. You've got two wides on this side. You have one at the top. It's Ferguson and Taylor down here at the bottom. McKinney out over the ball. Waiting on the snap back to Ferris. Taylor goes in motion. Low snap, drops back at the 40, throws the ball this sideline, and Taylor can't hang on down at the UTEP 35. It'll be an incomplete pass. And we'll bring up a punt with five seconds having been played here in the second period. Aggies have scored twice now on drives of 73 and 61 yards after UTEP marched down the field on their first possession on a 58-yard drive and got a touchdown pass to Knapp of six yards. Aggies score on the six-yard uh, pass to Ferguson and a 16-yard run to uh, Weber. Dave, that uh, incompletion by Mark Ferris was his first of the ball game here as we start the second half. He's, he was eight for eight going into that uh, pass. Here's the snap. They're coming. They don't get there. Nice high spiral. And uh, moving up to take a fair catch on his feet. He's at the 20-yard line. Will be Krantz Clemens. That's a 32-yard punt down to the uh, down to the 20, and that's the UTEP 20-yard line. Texas A&M starts conference play on September 30th against Texas Tech. Game time, 1 o'clock. Call the Verizon toll-free ticket hotline at 1-888-99-AGGIE. The Aggies and the Red Raiders here at Kyle Field on September 30th at 1 o'clock. 
UTEP trotting out on the field with their offensive unit, led by senior Rocky Perez. Single setback will be Rovan Cleveland. They have bunched them up here, three wides on each side of the ball. Basically, they've got uh, two guards and a center in the middle of the field, and a running back on the left of Perez, and now a flag. They got a delay of game. Trying to get that three wides at the top, three at the bottom, a running back beside Rocky Perez. Well, they had uh, had tackles out with the wide receivers. Their tackles, of course, you have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage, and they, their tackles were out with the wide receivers on either side of the ball, but they let the clock run down to zero, and they'll take the five-yard penalty. Come they'll out bring back the with it. Last time we saw this. <laughs> Tackle, <laughs> didn't know where to go. <laughs> Tackle's coming out of the twelve. Last time we saw this was Oklahoma in Norman last year. And they're looking for a shovel pass, and they will get it. And they had him stopped in the backfield, Cleveland, and he'll end up getting two of the five. They were penalized. He gets it back to the 17-yard line, and it was Roylin Bradley who smelled that one out. And he gave the shovel pass. That looked like Josh Heupel all over again last year up at Norman, and they're going to come out with that same formation again. And no huddle. No huddle, running back to the left. They've got two guards in the center on the inside. Now a pass will be thrown, and it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Lee Mays, and now you're going to get a flag thrown at the 22-yard line. Perez started to run, then he throws. Mays leaped up, brought it down, dropped it. And now we'll see the meaning of the flag. Illegal receiver downfield, Dave. Well, if they run that formation, they need to run it properly. And I'll tell you what, that night, Dan Norman, that... That was that a was long night. I <laughs> ate our box lunch, i got to be honest with you. That was a long night. Everything they tried up in Norman was uh, was golden. They couldn't do anything wrong. Let's get them down here into Kyle Field later on this uh, this year. They're discussing things now. And the, Ineligible uh, downfield. Offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. All right, third down at 13. The ball again at the 17-yard line. They were penalized on first and 10 for delay of game. Moved it back to the 15. Now they go back to a normal formation with a wide at the top, one at the bottom. They got to tie it in on the left side of the formation. Out of a shotgun, a running back either side of Perez. Drops back, steps up, throws, caught in and out of the hands of would-be tacklers. That's going to be Natkin again, and he turns it into a first down. They had him, did the Aggie wrecking crew stop at the 25, two Aggie off of him, and I think that's Alvin Ray who was the receiver then, and they got the ball all the way out to the 38-yard line, and that pass is good for 21 yards. Well, this is a, this one of those plays where you got to wrap him up, and you've got to make sure he doesn't get the first down. He bounced off at two tacklers. They had him five yards short of the first down. He picks it up, keeps the drive alive. They're all the way out to the 38. Ray coming down here is a flanker. they got to split in on the left side of the formation. There's the snap. Lone running back with Sherman Austin. He fights for a yard, and that's all he'll get from the 38 to his 39-yard line. It'll be second down coming up. The score is 14 to 7. It favors Texas A&M. The clock is 13-38 and counting in the second quarter at Kyle Field. Everett Smith has checked into the ball game now for the Aggies. And Ty Warren getting up off the bottom of that pile. He just stacked everything up there in the middle. Terrence Keel came off, and they are attending to him on the bench here on the near side. Hope he's okay. He was holding his leg coming off the field. Here's second down and nine. Got a slot to the left. Two running backs in the backfield. Offset. They fake the pitch. Now he rolls the ball. Batted up in the air. And who was that? That's going to be Jason Glenn. Got a hand on it. Knocked it right back and over the head of Rocky Perez. The quarterback incomplete pass. And now third down coming up. Boy, it looked like a volleyball spike. He just slapped it back in uh, Perez's face, did Jason Glenn. Speaking of volleyball, Lori Crabelli and uh, her team beat KU last night at G. Raleigh, three zip. Here is a third down at nine. Clock stopped at 13.07. Slot to the left, the open side of the formation. Shotgun, a running back left and right of Perez. He'll take the snap, standing at his 34. Has it, drops back to the 32, steps up, throws, caught, first down across midfield, down to the Aggie 46-yard line. And we'll get the receiver here in a moment. That's going to be good for 15 yards, and I think, again, that'll be Natkin the tight end. Yes, it was, Dave, and pretty good coverage by Weston there, but Natkin doing something that Robert Ferguson does well, using that big body to get between the defender and the quarterback and just taking the ball before the defender can get to it. 
Paul Tessier has checked in as one of their receivers. He's a split in and a flanker. He backs up both those positions. And now I think they're confused and they're going to have to take a timeout. UTEP will take a timeout with 12.43. Here at the second, the Aggies up 14 to seven. They are operating in A&M territory. First down and 10 at the Aggie 46 yard line. And we'll take a break. This is Texas Aggie football. First down and 10. UTEP's got the ball. They have moved into Aggie territory. They scored on their first possession tonight. They went 10 plays, 58 yards, and got a six yard pass to join App, one of their tight ends. They led seven. Since then, the Aggies have answered with a couple of drives. 73-yard drive on 61. If you just now dive a six-yard pass to Ferguson and a 16-yard run to Weber. But here they are. Miners, nobody in the backfield. Throw caught. Coming back this way by Mays. Good read by the Ags. Brian Gamble made that stop on Lee Mays, who set up wide to the right and then ran back toward the quarterback, Dave, and made that catch. Well, and a great play by Brian Gamble. The, this was a jailbreak. They let the lineman go through because they're going to throw it so quickly to the wide receiver. And, and Gamble read it. And he was on the ground, but he was able to make the stop for a short game. Clements coming out, and uh, Jay Brooks checking in. It's second down. That pickup was three. It's second and seven. The clock's 12 12. Shotgun again. Three wides left. Two to the top. Empty in the backfield. Step back to the 50. Throw the ball. That will be caught by Tessier at the 35 yard line. They pick up a first down. Three Aggies push him back to the 40, and they throw him to the turf there. See a reception from the arm of Perez at the 30. 10 for UTEP. Just a turn by Tessier, and I'm really impressed with Rocky Perez. He's locating the open receiver and delivering the football extremely well. Tessier is from California. He's a senior, played in six games last year, had one reception in the first two ball games for six yards. So now at the 35 yard line. Allen Ray, way to the top, flanker on this side with a this side of the formation. They drop back, now they roll. Now here is Perez throwing deep, has a man wide open, caught at nine in for a touchdown. Lee Mays goes 35 yards. Ties the ball game if they get the extra point. They motioned into an unbalanced line. As you said, there was no tight end on this side, nor a receiver, and it was Mays that went into motion back across the formation, and he just kept on going down the sideline. Somebody in the Aggie secondary dropped wide open. Perez found him, and it's a touchdown for UTEP. That drive started now at their 20. They just went 80 yards. Ricky Bishop, seven out of seven. Perez will be the holder. Snap is down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. They've tied the ball game at the 11-31 mark. It's tied at 14. A&M and UTEP and Kyle Fields. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. 31 to go. Dave will recap that drive in just a moment. It's now tied at 14. Oh, we've got a 58-yard drive, 73-61, and now an 80-yard drive. Here's the kickoff. And over on the far side, and now through the hands of Whitaker, he's going to have to take the knee as it in line. And we'll bring that one out to the 20-yard line. First and 10, the Aggies at their 20, 80 yards away, 11-23 to go on the second, tied to 14. Miners got the uh, ball at their own 20 following punt. They went uh, 80 yards in nine plays. They had a couple of third down conversions, but the big one was on a third and 13. They got a 21-yard completion to Natkin and the touchdown, a 35-yard strike to Lee Mays going down the sideline. Tied at 14 at the 11:31 mark. Quarter. Well, running back will be Whitaker, and the Aggies flexed out here to the right side as a blocker. Pitch goes back to Whitaker looking for the right corner. Down the sideline he goes tight rope and they bump him out of bounds at about the Aggie 27 so a nice carry there and Toombs had set up on the outside as a flanker to help lead the blocking on the right side of the Aggie formation. It was like a swinging game. They got a lot of blockers out on that side and then threw it as soon as they got underneath center threw it to Whitaker out behind those blockers and it was successful. Picked up eight. Stop the clock at 11-17 as he goes out of bounds. Ball shy of the Aggie 28. Eye formation behind 
Got a split left and a flanker right. Della Torre is the tight end, not on the eye. The lead back is Toombs. Followed by Weber, and Weber's got the carry. Is that Maurice Harris? It's Weber. Weber spins 40, 45, and out just shy of the 45 at the 44-yard. Oh, nice move there to spin to get away from a would-be tackler for UTEP. He just went 17 yards, and he started to get some pretty impressive. Also a dandy move right at the line of scrimmage, Dave. He started back to the left and then cut back all the way across the formation to break into the open field. He's got three carries now for, listen to this, 63. And for uh, Big Joel, that will be his best of the season. 23 and 29 in the first two ball games. First and 10 at the Aggie. Three under center is Ferris, single setback. And again, it will be Weber cuts it back to his right as he tries the left side. Gets it across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. It'll be a pickup. We'll say four yards. It'll be second down and six coming. Clock shows 10:35. He's in UTEP at 14. So Derek Broughton, uh, Dave just checked out of the lineup. He and Delatore are standing beside the uh, tight ends coach. Ellingson. Single setback again for Texas A&M will be Weber. Top one to the bottom. Start to run the option. Ferris keeps flag, goes down. Top everything. Ferris is tackled as he goes across the 50. And apparently we did something we did. Procedure, Dave. So a five-yard mark for Texas A&M. This broadcast brought to you in part by Budweiser, who salutes parents who talk to their kids about drinking. We all make a difference. Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty. It'll back us up, back across the 40, back to the Aggie, 41 and a half. It'll be second down, and a little more than 11 will be needed. They must net just past the 40-yard line on the UTEP side of 50. Clock's going to hit 10 minutes before we tap the ball. Tied at 14, shotgun. Running back to the left. And he snaps it. Pumps now the shovel pass forward to uh, Weber, and he gets a yard. Great read by UTEP. And Kamar Jackson, a sophomore out of Midland High, who had 58 tackles last year as a freshman. Got maybe a yard. It's going to be third down and still about 11 yards. This uh, play looked uh, looked wide open uh, as it developed, but Kamar Jackson read it quickly and reacted very quickly to stop it for a yard gain. Here we go on the third down play now with the clock at 9.20. Shotgun, a running back, left and right to the Aggie quarterback, Mark Ferris. Two to the top, to the bottom. There's the snap, drops back, stands at the 35-yard line, throws, first down, catch, and they got the ball to Bethel Johnson. Let go, UTEP 45, first and 10, the Aggies. 9.09 to go, game tied at 14. That's a 12-yard pass. Mark Ferris able to show off the strength of his arm. That's a long throw from that drop all the way to the sideline and Bethel Johnson knowing exactly what he needed to pick up the first down about a yard yard and a half beyond the sticks but it's a completion and it keeps the drive alive inside you territory Ferguson and Taylor go to the top Bethel Johnson's at the bottom single setback here's Weber tight ends on the left side we drop back deep pocket throwing sideline Bethel Johnson and uh, he and the defender go up at the 10. The ball's incomplete. Great defense by Weldon Cooks. And incomplete. So going on a deep sideline around here on the right side of the field. Uh, trying to stretch uh, UTEP deep. Open up that defense a little bit. And we show that, uh, that they've got some good guys and some good uh, corners. They can uh, cover man-to-man. -man, and a lot of the time they're in man-to-man. -man. That time Weldon Cooks stride for stride with the Aggie receiver. That guy was the of the year at senior year. He's a sophomore now at UTEP. Shotgun. Empty in the backfield. Two in the slots on the left. Has the snap. Now Ferris picks up. Quarterback draw. 40. Running the ball. 35. 30 yard line. He's got a first down. Texas A&M. Mark Ferris. Right up the middle. Just waited for everybody to pursue to close left and right. And it went up the middle. This is a play that, uh, that you call to try to slow down that rush. UTEP uh, seeing Ferris in the uh, in the shotgun, in their ears back and going on the rush. You just wait a second and run right up the middle and he'll pick up the first down all the way down. 
gain the lead in the ball game. We're down seven, nothing. Tied at seven, went up 14 to seven. Now tied again at 14. I formation, tied in right flanker, split in left. Hand off tailback, hits the 30. Looks like Weber again fighting as he will get to about the 26 yard line. Pick up of about four. It'll be second down and four. Now at 8.25. Got to have it second down and six. The ball is spotted about the 26 yard line in UTEP territory. There goes Taylor as they break the huddle, coming to the top of the formation down here on the bottom. Here's the flanker Ferguson to tie it in. On this side will be Lonnie Madison. Bengal McCauley checked out, Brent Lively replaced him, and now they hand off and they go up the middle to Weber, and Weber will maybe a half yard if he got that. So now we'll come back and face a third down play, Dave. At Ferguson motion, uh, much like they've used Dwayne Goins on that reverse action. Looked like on that one, they might have given it to Ferguson. They look wide open. So now it's third down to the at eight minutes. Playing in the second quarter, taking it down here to halftime. Three wides on the top. They got two on the bottom. Aggies are going without a tight end. Empty in the backfield. Two in the slots. One of those down here on the bottom is Weber. Out of the shotgun. Some pressure. Ferris got away. Rolls to the sideline. Going in zone. And did he catch the ball? No, he was out of bounds. Ferguson had it on the side. And they say no, he was out of bounds. And he's pointing toward the replay. And he's going to stand there and watch it. Well, I'd like to see it myself. I, got, I will say this for the official. He had perfect position to see this, to, to make this call, but I'd like to see it as well. It looked from way up here, it looked like he might have gotten a foot in. All right, so they rule it out of bounds. And we've seen no replay to uh, this point. Now we're going to try a field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 33. It's a 43-yard effort. Terrence Kitchens is one out of one. Between 40 and 49. Bonovich spots it down. The kick is going to be low, and uh, man, somebody may have gotten a hand on that. If not, just a bad kick, and it hits into the end zone. So we get nothing out of that one. And we'll remain tied at 14 with 7.32 to go here in the uh, second quarter. Down to the field, Tom Turbyville. Tango McCauley, Dave, the situation there, a sprained MCL for the Aggie offensive lineman, and they say that his return is questionable. I could not uh, tell from my angle where anybody got a hand on that field goal attempt by Terrence Kitchens. Like you said, it looks like he just missed that one. Very low and hit in the end zone and got out of the end zone. Here he is, UTEP, first and 10 at their 26. Drop back, shallow pocket, throw, caught by Allen Ray being uh, tussled and finally out close to a first down. He's about the 34 line. They will miss a first down by about a yard. So it's second down and one coming up for UTEP. Stop the clock at 726, game tied at 14. And the Miners really mixing up uh, their looks on offense. Uh, they go to the quick spin. Uh, and throw. They'll go to the seven step drop, go deep. They'll run the football. A wide variety of multiple set offense, and they're clicking on all cylinders so far in this first half. They got Knapp and Knapp now a uh, reserve tight end going in motion. They three left. They're going to keep it on the ground as they try to get the first down, and they're not going to get it. So on a second down and one, they got to the line of scrimmage, the 35. They need their own 36 for the first down. Third and one will be coming up. So they bunched that one up in the middle, Ron along with Brian Campbell, ended up making the uh, stop. Brian Campbell, two-plus tackles in every game that he has played in during his career. He's a sophomore out of Alto. They're taking a lot of time here in the huddle. They come with 14 seconds on the 25-second clock. High formation on third down and a yard. And they'll hand off to the tailback. Hits in there, bounces out, fights for the extra yard. I don't think he got it. They got just across the 35. That's going to be awfully close. And the spot, I think, is going to reveal they're going to end up about a length of the football shy of a first down. Well, that's what I see, Dave, but it wasn't for lack of effort. They had him stopped uh, behind uh, the 35-yard line, and he fought his way across the 35, but it looks like he's going to be the length of the football short of the sticks. Will they measure? To bring the chains out from the far side. Rovan Cleveland was the tailback in question on that play. He's 6'1", 220. Freshman redshirt out of California. 
who had 10 uh, carries, 105 yards rushing against New. He was 7 for 13 against OU. Here's the stretch. And uh, ooh, they did not get it. Inches shy. So now a fourth down and inches. They're going to send Perez back out there. Let's see if it's with the purpose of trying to draw the Aggies offsides. 6.27 to go in the second quarter, tied at 14. UTEP needs inches at their 35. Here they come to the line of scrimmage. Going to have two wide seats side of the ball. Aggies are bunching out. They're going to uh, sneak for it, and they got it on second effort. So with fourth and inches, Perez will carry for a UTEP first down. Took it over the right guard and uh, was able to keep his feet on the ground and keep turning. The Aggies tried to submarine the play. He went over the top, picks up about a yard. That's all they needed to pick up the first, keep the drive alive. Travel to see the Aggies this season on the 2001 Jeep Cherokee Sport from Advantage Rent-A-Car. For reservations, call 1-800-777-5500 or go to AdvantageRentacar.com. First and 10. First downs now. They've got nine on the night. UTEP. Ball's at there, 36 and a half. They put a man in motion. Now they're going to have to call a timeout. We're running out of time or not, but Perez calls time. It's granted, and now they've got one remaining with 5.57 showing on the clock in the second quarter. The game tied at 14. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. First down and 10 at their 36-yard line. Going to throw a quick one across on a slant across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Lee Mays made the reception. Jared Morris, one of those in on the tackle. That'll be a pickup of five. Second down and five coming up. What's Mays done tonight? He's been sort of busy for UTEP, one of their primary go-to guys. Uh, that's his fourth reception uh, for a total of 54 yards. Of course, uh, his last reception was that 35-yarder for the touchdown that tied the game at 14. Six for 58 against OU. Six for 100. 143 against SMU. Second down, scoreboard says six. All at the 40. 521 to go in the first half. They'll keep it on the ground. That's Sherman Austin. He's coming back this way to the sideline. The Aggies are chasing him. We'll push him out of bounds and in literally to the bench. He hits one of the fans there. I'm talking about a actual fan, not a fan, but a real electric fan. Not a fanatic, but an electric fan. And he went out at the 40, and he got nothing except just uh, east and west. And that'll bring up a third down and still about six. He hit the bench and then hit the fan, and then almost got one of the Aggies sitting there on the bench. I think that was uh, almost hit Linda Smith. Now the Aggies will bring in Jay Brooks and go to that nickel coverage here in a passing situation on third and six. Big play. They say now third and seven. The ball closer to the 40. They need past the 46. A little more than six, less than seven. Eye formation. Mays is going in motion. They've got a wide out on the right. Here is Perez throwing, looking for Mays. He caught the ball. And did he get enough for the first down? They keep the clock rolling. He rolled over the tackler for the Aggies. That was Sammy Davis. And I don't think he got enough for the first down. He didn't get enough, Dave, but uh, it was, I think, a very generous spot. Uh, Davis uh, with a tackle that looked like it was further back, but it'll be very close, and they'll measure. They needed seven, and actually less than seven. The ball's been spotted at the UTEP 46-yard line. The chains are just right there. It's on the sideline. He did not get out of bounds, but they stopped the clock for the measurement. 4.55 to go in the first half. The game is tied at 14. The Aggies play in UTEP. They got the first down. Kind of like you, I think that was a generous uh, spot on the uh, part of the uh, Big 12 crew here. So now at the 46-yard line, they keep the drive alive. What have they done on third downs tonight? They are now five out of eight on third down conversions. They were eight of 30 in their first two ball games. This is a good offense. It is first down and 10. They're near midfield. UTEP side of the 50. Hand off. They try Chris Porter. He's the full back, and he goes to the uh, UTEP 49-yard line. Picks up about two and a half, maybe three. Maybe second down and seven coming up. The clock's at four minutes and 30 seconds and running. And the Aggies will bring in uh, Stephen Young. Kind of moving those defensive linemen, spelling them. These long drives take it out of the defensive linemen, and they're trying to keep some fresh bodies in there. 
Move in under center will be Perez. He has a running back. That's Porter. He's a full back off to his left. Lined up back at the 45. Drops back. He's under some pressure. Now he's going to run with the ball. Gets it into Aggie territory to the 49. Perez crosses the 50-yard line. Got a yard and a half on that. Third down coming up for the Miners. Ronald Flemons made the stop along with Brian Gamble. Now he went to the two-step drop and he wanted to hit Mays very, very quickly. But Sammy Davis had him covered up. And so he pulled it down and uh, just put his head down and tried to run for it. And as you said, they picked up about a yard. Another big third down play here, third and about seven. Clemens, six tackles and a sack in his first two ball games. The senior out of San Antonio Marshall, shotgun. Perez will take the snap standing at his 45. And a quarterback draw, he tries the middle, bounces off one man, another, and he got the first down. Across the 40 to the 36, and that was second effort by Rocky Perez and Sean Weston out of the secondary after he was caught behind the line of scrimmage, made the tackle, and he picks up 13 yards on a third down and what, Dave, about six or seven needed? Third and about six and a half, and it was a quarterback draw that the Aggies stopped cold, but uh, Perez didn't stop. He kept going. The Aggies didn't wrap him up, and he got another first down down at the 37. They are playing here for a halftime lead. They move the ball to the Aggie 38, an inside handoff to the fullback. That'll be Porter, and Porter will carry near the 35-yard line, a pickup of near three. It's going to be second down and seven coming up. Now we're under three minutes to go until halftime with 2.49 remaining on the clock. Tied at 14, a big drive here for Utah, but it's a big drive as far as the ranking crew is concerned. Neither team has turned the ball over in the ball game tonight. So now second down, scoreboard says eight. They need the Aggie 28 for a first ball. Close here to the Aggie 35. Mays in motion, high formation. Tight ends on the right. Rolling right, setting up, throwing sideline. It'll be what flag goes down. And the uh, reception will be good for a first down, down to the 22-yard line. That was Alan Ray, who just caught the pass. I, be, I bet oh, this is a setup. I bet this is a pass interference on Mays, who blocked the defender. But let's see what the official says. Ineligible downfield, I think, is what he just said. I think you're right. And now Mike Weir will relay that over the PA here in a moment. That was a first down reception to Ray down to the 22-yard uh, line. Second down. Would have been a first down had they, oh, not, I see. Uh, not, had they not ruled it's a, uh, a penalty. It was a first down reception. Ineligible downfield against the offense. Five-yard penalty. So rub out a first down and move the ball back now to the 41-yard line on the penalty. Two minutes and 17 seconds. Now it's second down coming up and 13 at the 41. That's the Aggie 41. The ball in the middle of the field, equal distance between the hash marks. Tight end on the right is Joy Knapp. No tight end on this side. They've got to split in. They've covered up. Now they split out down a flanker on the right. Shotgun, two running backs. Drop back to midfield, step up, has plenty of time to throw, caught by Ray, fighting for a first down. I don't know if he got it or not. I think he did. Second effort, I think he got a first down. He's across the 28, almost the 27-yard line. Over the middle they go with that pass to Allen Ray, and that's good for 14 yards. Once again, Dave, Perez just doing an outstanding job of locating the open receiver and delivering the ball right on the money. My, oh my, these guys are hanging with the axe tonight on their home fields. One minute and 50 seconds to go. The ball now first and 10, UTEP. They have moved out of the Aggie 27. This drive started at the UTEP 26-yard line. They went 80 yards in nine plays on their last possession to score. Slot right, flanker left, tight end is on the left side. Shotgun, inside handoff to the right half. And that's Porter. He's caught behind the line. He'll be dropped outside the 28, maybe at the 28-yard line. They have one timeout remaining. They've got 1.20 on the clock. That'll be second down and 11. They'll chase Joy Knapp back out on the field, and the full will leave. Boston, Ray, Knapp, Mays. And all Knapp get the big tie with two times in this formation and Perez will move in under center 
Oh, running backs off to the his right. Drops back, shallow pocket, throws. Ray caught it at the 22-yard line for a first down, going to the 21 by Jason Glenn, and also that was Terrence Keel in on the Clock down to 37, 36. UTEP with that one timeout remaining. This will be a third and about uh, three. Down to 30 seconds. Now 27 seconds, 26 seconds as they come to the line, and they're going to call a timeout. Timeout will be called with 23 seconds to go in the half. They call out. They are out of time. Two wides at the top, two at the bottom. One's a tight end split off from the line. Single running back is up close to the line to the right. Under center, Perez. Aggies, little pressure. Throw the ball. Incomplete. Stop the clock. 20 seconds. Out in front of the intended receiver, and somebody may have gotten a hand on it for Texas A&M, but nonetheless incomplete. And now fourth down. We'll have a field goal attempt for UTEP. The Ricky Bishop. Bishop on field goals, three out of four. His longest this season has been 41. They're going to spot this one at the 27-yard line, a 37-yard effort. The angle is back to the right. He's one out of one between 30 and 39 this year. Perez will hold. Waiting on the snap. There it is. Kicks on its way. Got plenty of distance. Kick is good, and UTEP leads it 17 to 14 with 15 seconds to go until halftime. This is Texas Aggie football. In the wrong cue. As we come back, they kick off, and they kick the ball out of bounds on the far sideline. Rolls out of the 25, 15 seconds to go until halftime. They squibbed that one. They didn't want to return. It's 17 to 14. Second time tonight that UTEP leads. Uh, the Aggies uh, missed a field goal, and that gave UTEP the ball at the, uh, their own 26-yard line. 16 plays. UTEP goes 53 yards. Uh, within that drive, they had three third-down conversions and one fourth-down conversion. Uh, it stalls down in Aggie territory, and Ricky Bishop kicks the 37-yard field goal to give UTEP the lead 17 to 14 with 15 seconds left in the half. They kick the ball out of bounds. The Aggies will get it. First down and 10 at their 35 with 15 seconds remaining. First and 10. Break the huddle. Come to the line. Show a shotgun. Three wides at the bottom. Two at the top. No tight end in this formation. No running backs. Two in the slot on the right. There's the snap. Drops back. Looking. Now he throws out to the 41-yard line. There is a flag at the point. The ball was caught at the 40. A gain of five. And that was caught by Whitaker, and it's going to be defense, offensive pass interference against Texas A&M. That ran the clock down to nine seconds. Texas A&M's got the ball, first down and 25 at their own 20-yard line with nine seconds remaining out of an eye formation. Ferris under center. And Ferris will hand off. They'll go to Toombs, and Toombs carries across the 25 to about the 26-yard line, and that should be the last play of the first half, and it will be. We're going to have time, 17-14 UTEP.
executive officer is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Michael Fly. The head gun major is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Clayton. Artillery band gun major is Cadet Major Mike Wong. Infantry band gun major is Cadet Major Jason Griffin. Cody Skates will kick off into the win. UTEP deferred. After having won the coin toss, they elect to take the ball. The Aggies then will kick off at the uh, choice of taking the win in the third or fourth. They'll take it at the fourth. And that win is probably less than 10 now. They have uh, two return men standing back inside the five. Nice kick at the goal line, drops it back in the end zone. Sherman Austin will go back and take the knee. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. What do we have on the first half stats, Dave? Do you have those handy over there anyway? Yes, I do, Dave. Uh, we'll look at those real quickly. First downs, uh, 12 for UTEP, 11 for A&M. Rushing yards, uh, 45 for UTEP, 135 for the Aggies. Passing yards, uh, 168 for UTEP, 74 for A&M. Total offense, 213 UTEP, 209. A&M. Last time the Aggies were down at halftime was 16 to 6 last year against Texas. Had 14 second half points, won the goal, ball game, 20 to 16. We're down at halftime tonight, 17 to 14. Out of a shotgun, low snap. Quarterback will run with the ball. Has about an eight. Picked it up off the ground and lunges forward to the 28-yard line on a first and ten. They're going to give him the 27. So it'll be second down and three. Cornelius Anthony was there. But uh, Rocky Perez, who's been ever, uh, ever alert at that quarterback position tonight, just uh, game seven after that he picked up off the uh, turf. Looked like a shortstop back there. Just picked the ball up and uh, took it uh, straight ahead with that quarterback draw. Second down and three. Just underway. Second half. The Aggies trail by three. 17-14. I formation. They'll hand off to the tailback. Caught in the backfield at the 25 is Sherman Austin. One of the few times we're able to... Drop him for a loss, and you do there. Ronald Flemons, the big cat, along with Jason Glenn, who's been very active tonight for this defense combined on the tackle. Jason Glenn coming around the outside on the blitz and was able to stop this one before it ever got started. It'll lose a yard and bring up a third and five for UTEP. Another big third down play for the Aggie defense. They were six out of ten on third down. Three to the uh, top of the formation, two to the bottom. Empty in the backfield, shotgun, low snap, coming up the middle, throw the ball, almost intercepted, and now a flag goes down. Vodovich almost had his hands on it at the 35, and a flag goes down with the uh, close play on the interception by the Aggies. And now let's see what the uh, swipe shirts are having to say. Defensive pass interference against a and Billy on a... what they're going to talk about. I wonder out there, I'd like to see the replay on that one, and I do not see it up on the uh, my left in the, uh, in the booth. I may fall under that category of controversial play, yeah, but I, I just wonder where, if he knocked, he got to the ball. Defense, pass interference, spot foul, automatic first down. So they convert on a third down with a penalty. And they move the ball out to the 37-yard line, 13-39 to go. So the drive stays alive on an almost interception. Turns into defensive pass interference. First and ten. Play action. Rolling to his right. Now running. He'll run to the sideline. And out of bounds will go Rocky Perez. And he picks up 
about six, maybe seven of what he needed on the first down. It'll be second down and three coming up, chased out of bounds by Evan Peroni. Well, good coverage downfield. It was once again uh, the tight end uh, out in the flat. That would be Natkin, and uh, he was well covered. So Perez just pulled the ball down. Uh, the Aggies didn't have any containment for him, and he'll ramble up, uh, pick up six, all the way up to the 44-yard line. You know, the interception a moment, uh, a moment ago was, was really caught behind the receiver. I don't know. I'd like to have that explained to me. Here's second down and three. They'll keep it on the ground. They pick up a first down and a whole lot more. Across the 50, they move the ball all the way down to the 45 in Aggie territory, a 12-yard gain. About 11 on the uh, carry. Right up the middle they go. Sherman Austin picks up a first down. Come right back out. Looked like they uh, did on their first drive tonight when they went 10 plays at 58 yards and took the lead at 7 to nothing at the 9.06 mark. Starting the second half the same way they started the first. Single running back offset here to the right. And a movement uh, on the left side by the uh, tight end, Natkin. And Christian Rodriguez uh, head up on Natkin, and as soon as he flinched, Rodriguez started pointing at him, and uh, the officials were soon to follow with the flags. It'll move him back five to the 50-yard line. Dead ball. Ball starts. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Move the ball back to the 50. They need the Aggie 35. So at midfield, they've got it first and 15. 13-10 to go in the third. Field goal separates the two teams right now. That field goal gives UTEP the lead, 17-14. Here's a first down play, same formation. Flanker left, tight end to the left. Straight drop, plenty of time, pumps. He's going to go sideline. He'll throw deep. The Aggies are back, playing it. Terrence Steele intercepts. Two flags are down, and now here's the return. Out of bounds across the 45 near midfield. Go Keel, but I think they're going to get us for defensive pass interference. Well, I didn't see any contact on that out and up. So I don't know where the pass interference occurred, but we probably won't see the replay either, so there's no way to tell. Ball was intercepted by Keel. He returned it on the far sideline, bumped out at the Aggie 48 into the UTEP bench. And now the officials are discussing what they're about to uh, rule or give us a judgment on. They're standing at the Aggie 45, the referee, and three of his co-officials standing there. Now here comes Mike Weir, holding against a and Now this was an out and up, or a stop and go, I should say, to Lee Mays. He went out there, with, got a pump fake from the quarterback off the, uh, the stop route, and then turned and went. Terrence Keel had coverage over the top, and he was able to intercept this ball, but uh, there must have been some holding before that ever happened. The officials, uh, there were two flags down on the field. Holding on the defense, an eligible receiver, 10 yards, previous spot, first down. They moved the ball down to the 40-yard line. This drive started at the uh, UTEP 20. And on that last play, Perez had all day. And they'll keep it on the ground. They go to Sherman Austin, caught at the line, brought down at the 40. The cat, Ronald Flemons, just caught him around the ankles and brought him down a half-yard gain. Second down, and a, uh, about nine and a half will be needed when they come back to the line. So a second and nine. They've got a net to the A couple of penalties on this drive. Here comes Brooks in. And the young off the field. John Weston stays back there. Bonovich is back there. Now here's the snap. The Aggies are uh, putting some pressure on. They throw the ball. It's caught by Mays. He advances from behind the line of scrimmage. Actually caught it, Dave, I guess about the 37. Goes down to the 32. Picks up about five, six yards, maybe a little bit more than that. He picks up down to about the two. It's going to be third down and two. Mays caught it up. What's he done now? now? That was a jailbreak break screen where they bring Mays in motion back toward the line of scrimmage and uh, throw him the ball quickly, and he's got blockers out in front of him. That will be his sixth catch, and he has 66 yards on the night. Stephen Young checks back in. Jay Brooks comes out. Line up with the tight end in the backfield off the line of scrimmage. They'll hand off. It goes to Porter. Fights for a first down. Pushes for it. I don't know if he got it. He's near the 30. They need a skosh more than that. 
Marcus Porter carried junior squadsman out of San Antonio Clark who carried 11 times for 79 yards against Oklahoma. He pushed that one to the 30-yard line on a third down and two. Now they may have to bring the chains out. They will. We'll see the chains out from the far side of the fields. Last time the Aggies trailed at halftime against a non-conference opponent was 1992 when we trailed Tulsa 6-3 at halftime. Aggies went on to win that game 19-9 and also won their ninth, uh, the next nine games on their way to a 12-0 regular season. And on the last drive, UTEP had this same situation, fourth and inches, and went for it with the quarterback sneak and were able to keep the drive alive. Let's see what they decide to do here. It looks like, yep, here comes Perez. They will go here on fourth down and inches. So they are one out of one on fourth down conversions, if my memory serves me right. Yes. They are six of 12, 50% on third down conversions. Fourth and inches. No running backs. Two wides, high and low. Center, Terry Clayton out over the ball. Aggies bunching up right in front of Perez, and I don't know if he made it or not. No Second way. effort. Trying to get to the 30. He did not make it. Aggies will push him by. Hey, big play made that time by Terrence Keel, and also by Jason Glenn. Will stop it. Vert on fourth down. The Aggies over now. At their own 30, 70 yards away, we're going to get a timeout. 11-14 to go in the third. A&M trailing UTEP 17-14. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. It's third quarter time. It's 11-14. Beginning in the quarter, the Aggies trailing the game 17-14. They've got the ball. First down and 10 at their own 30. They break the huddle and come to the line of scrimmage showing an eye of formation. Split in left, flanker is to the right. Favors hash mark to the left. Count Ferris drops back, sets up, throws. His receiver fell down. Ferguson at the 40-yard line over his head and into the bench it will go. Aggie fans, there's a new Texas A&M football video screensaver. 30 full motion clips from Texas A&M football. This is for $20. To order, call 1-800-427-9422 or visit AggielandScreensavers.com. Second down and 10 coming up. A&M at their 30 after an incomplete pass. Ferris now on the uh, night throwing the ball is 10 out of 14 and only 74 yards. High formation, a deep pitch, flag goes down. Whitaker looking for the left corner, got five yards. He's wrapped up at the 35-yard line. Now let's see the meaning of the flag. Uh, two flags, one on each side of the field. Maybe offside. They're talking about it. Let's see if that's not the call. Offsides against uh, Tap. Aggie football is brought to you in part by Dodge of the friendly Dodge dealers near you. In a perfect world, everything would be different. Offsides, defense, five yard penalty, previous spot. So now move the ball out to the 35, take the penalty, and save the down. It'll be second down and five. Joe Weber, Weber comes in, replaces Whitaker. Comes off of the sideline here. And Weber then will be the only running back. Ferguson and linked out away to the uh, right side here on the left. Gets Beth. Long count by Ferris, has it? Hands off to Weber. Weber spins as he hits the line and got a yard to the 36-yard line, and that's it. Hands off to Weber, got a yard. Down and four. Jackson, the sophomore out of Midland, made the stop on Joe Weber. Weber has a touchdown run of 16 yards tonight at the 315 mark back in the first. And the Aggies trail in the ball game by a score of 17 to as the clock works down to the 10-minute mark of the third. Shotgun on third down and four. Ferris will take the snap at his 31. With a running back on either side. Stunning in the line. He has time to throw. He does throw, and the Aggies have a first down and a catch here to Bethel Johnson. His sixth of the night as he gets across the 45 to the 40. He had the 47-yard line, and they pushed him to the 45 and the official on the other side is saying move the ball 
The official here on this sideline is keeping it at the 45. A lot of credit here. A lot of credit to the offensive line there. Oh, no. They got cheated out of two yards there. A lot of credit to the offensive line. Ferris had all day to throw back there. He located Bethel Johnson on that crossing route. Keeps the drive alive out at the 45. First down and 10 at the 45. Aggie side of the 50. Got a slot to the right. And there's the tight end here is covered up with an eye formation. Ferris has the ball. Play action. Drops back under pressure. Gets by one man. Now he's coming back this way. Is he going to run for it? He'll go into the sideline. And he gets the 47-yard line as he runs into the Aggie bench. Got a flag, flag down. down at the 32-yard line. Now they pick it up and throw it back to the 39-yard line, and that's the UTEP into the field. And the official is running as hard as he can here to meet with Mike Weir, the referee. See the meaning of that? Maybe holding. It's going to be holding against UTEP, so the Aggies are going to get the benefit of against the uh, Miners. Register each week for tickets to Aggie football and dinner for four at the Bryant College Station, Jason's Deli. This week's winner, Sarah McKenzie. Holding against UTEP. Don't forget the R.C. Slocum call-in show Thursday nights. Turn over many of these same stations. It's also on the internet. If you can't get the show, you can still call the coach if you have a question. He welcomes your questions. 1-800-927-9979. It's the ninth year in a row for the R.C. Slocum Call-In Show. So they move the ball down to the UTEP 42-yard line. Now there's more confusion. They're all going to get together. No pass was thrown. It was a running play is what he just announced over the PA. The ball then was moved down to the 42. The chains of the down marker have not been moved. Now they move them. So after all said and done, the clock's at 9.36. The Aggies get a first down at the UTEP 42, trailing of the ball game 17 to 14. It's in the third quarter. Better than 65,000 watching the ball game tonight, even though we don't have the official attendance. They're expecting that crowd. Two wides on the right, tight ends on the right. Not covered up. Split in left is Bethel Johnson. Single setback. Ferris under center, Seth McKinney. Hands off to Weber. Weber breaks a tackle, looking for the corner. Lowers his head, booms into one man, and got a yard as he goes out of bounds on the far side of the field. They took that one and strung it out wide to the right. He got a yard to the 41. It'll be second down and nine when the Aggies return. Stops the clock at 9.29. Lonnie Madison will check into the lineup at tight end. He's been alternating with... Mark Ferris looking to the sideline here. Has 15 times completed 11, 83 yards. Passing offense. Our total in the ball game is up to 220. They've got 245. Two wides to the left. That's the open side of his formation. Under center, Ferris starts the option. Now makes the looking for the corner. It's bundled and brought down with a nice little bow on top. Tackle made by Trey Merkins. And we lose back to the 45-yard line. A loss of four on a pitch on the option. Going to the left to Weber, and he comes off limping. And Richard Whitaker will go in to replace him, along with Jamar Toombs. Option play, good pitch, good execution, but UTEP was just there. With three out of well defense. Three out of six on third downs. We have 13 first downs tonight. They are six of 12, and this is a big third down. You got third down at 13 at the UTEP 45. Shotgun, no running backs. Time to throw. Does over the middle. Caught. That's Bethel again. Bethel Johnson, first down, 21 yard line. Boy, Mark Ferris set up, and this was a timing play. Quick slant, the little quick post, and a beautiful throw, and a great job of hanging on to the football by, by Bethel Johnson. And that'll move the ball down to the 22-yard line. And that went for, we'll check it again here in a minute, that's going to go for a total of 23 yards down to the 22, and the Aggies just convert on a third down. That'll be the fourth out of seven tonight. Out of an eye formation. Put a man in motion from the right side. That's the tight end side. Handoff. Whitaker gets back to the line of scrimmage as they try the right side. And there's nothing there. It'll be second down and ten coming as Whitaker got the handoff. Offensive lines. Valletta will check some of those guys. I think Tango McCauley, he is indeed back out there, but now he will trot off the field. Means it light. 
Bradley has checked back in. Over on the other side is Andre Brooks. He's replaced Michael Mayhem. Tied in is Roderick Broughton. He's on the right side of the formation. You got a flanker outside of him. That's Bethel Johnson. Got Taylor here as a split in on the left side. Under center, Ferris with an eye formation. Under pressure, got by the first man. Now Mel throws back across. Almost intercepted as it goes off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Bethel Johnson. And about the uh, UTEP 14 complete. What well, Bethel might have been Ferguson. Was it Ferguson? Yeah, it was Ferguson. Ferguson. Six, not in not number nine that time. Boy, Bethel Johnson, is he seven receptions now? Seven catches at 63 yards for Bethel. That's a new personal high of receptions in a ball game. So he's been the guy tonight. Two wides on the right. The inside man is Ferguson. The outside man is Taylor. Bethel's a split in on the left out of a shotgun on third down and 10 with 7.37 to go. Drop back under pressure. Dancing around. Now throwing the ball. Caught. It's going to be close for a first down. They, oh, no, 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 no. They're going to move the ball back to the 12. He caught it at the 10. Forward progress should be the 10. The other official is standing at the 10-yard line on the far side of the field. He's got it spotted at the 10. The man that came up to meet the play there, we got it. Now well, that's the eighth catch for Bethel Johnson. First down, this Texas drive alive. Eight catches for Bethel. Almost got chipped out of one right there, but the official on the other side had forward progress at the 10. Aggies can get a first down without getting a touchdown. They would have to get it inside the one and right to the edge of the goal line. So here we go, first and 10 outside the 10. Looking to take the lead. The clock at 6.55. Tight end right, flanker right, split in left, I formation. Ferris under center, run the option. Ferris cuts it back. To his left as he goes over the right side of the line, carries down to the eight. He will get two. It'll be second down and eight. Again, they can get inside the one and could get a first down, but let's go ahead and get the touchdown. Mickey Jones checking in. Bethel Johnson checking in. Madison's coming off, and Jamar Toombs coming off the field. Second down play. The clock now at 625. It's the third quarter in Kyle Field. The Aggies trail by three. Ferris comes out, shows a shotgun. Has a running back to his left, two wides on either side. The snap, shovel pass, Whitaker inside the five and goes down at the one. He'll be close for a first down, fumbles the ball into the end zone, but he was down. They've spotted him at the two. At the two-yard line, he goes down. And the crowd yelling, Tombs, here Tombs. He and here he comes back into the lineup. This is that shovel pass. It's been successful for the Aggies. Well executed. Whitaker almost got in and almost picked up the first down. Looks like they've... He's about a yard short of the first down and about two yards, almost two yards short of the goal line. Stacy Jones will be the fullback. The tailback is Toombs. You got the three tight ends of the lineup on third down and about a yard at the two. Hand it off. It goes to Toombs. Lowers his head. Gets in. Touchdown. Over the left side behind the left guard, Chris Spilletta. Ian McKinney laid the blocking, along with Brent Lively, I think, was still in the ball game then. And the Aggies take the lead at the 5.30 mark. 20 to 17 will try to up it to a four-point advantage with the extra point by Terrence Kitchens, who came out, by the way, near the end of the halftime after the Aggie band had played and uh, practiced for a while. He and Botovich were kicking extra points. Waiting on the snap from Chance Pierce. There it is, spotted by Botovich. The kick by Kitchens is good. Aggies make it 21 to 17 at 5.30 to go in the third. They lead UTEP. This is Texas Aggie football. Tom got hurt. All right, Dave, the uh, recap on the drive before the kickoff. It was a failed fourth down conversion by UTEP down at the Aggie 30 yard line. That's where the Aggies took over. It took 12 plays to go the 70 yard. Third and 13, got a 23-yard completion to Beth Bethel Johnson. Toombs with the two-yard run for the touchdown. The Aggies lead it 21-17 to at the 5.30 mark of the third quarter. Not a whole lot of win, and Skates has been good on his kickoffs. He's been kicking those right to the goal line, and they misplayed the last one. They had to take a knee after fumbling the ball. Squibber going to hit big high bounce. They're going to let it roll out of the back of the end zone to bring it out to the 20. So another nice kick here by Skates. He went right down between the hash marks. 
and split the difference between the two return men. So now it's UTEP's ball. 5.25 remaining in the third quarter, and the Aggies have the lead again at 21-17. We were down at halftime, 17-14. As Dave told you, we went 12 plays, 70 yards, Toombs, a two-yard carry. And for Jamar, that will be his third touchdown of the season. Now UTEP, we need a good defensive stand right here. High formation. And off it goes to Sherman uh, Austin. He's caught behind the line back at the 16-yard line. Ty Warren, sophomore out of Bryan High. Boy, what a nice play by Warren. He got great penetration. He was standing there, almost took the handoff. Able to stop this one for about a four-yard loss. Checking out of the lineup now will be uh, Flemings. Brooks has checked in. Teal, Davis, Bonovich. Weston, Brooks, inside linebacker, Gamble, also Anthony out of a shotgun, under pressure, steps up, throws the ball, almost intercepted by Sean Weston, intended receiver Mays at about the 25-yard line, in and out of Weston's hands, he almost had a quick pick, it goes incomplete, that'll be a third down play coming up, still need about 14, they've got to move the ball out to their own 30. Clock stops at 4.45 in the third. And your Aggies ahead of the ball game now, 21 to 17. Into the ball game now for Texas A&M. The freshman, Jonte Buell, checks in. Buell out on the field. He'll be matched up with a receiver wide to the right side. Under center is Perez. Draw. It goes to Austin. Austin fighting for a first down. Did not get there. He got out to the 28. He got 12 of the 14 they needed. Now this is going to be about two yards short, and that's uh, too far for uh, oh, UTEP yeah. to go for it on a yard down. shot. Uh, got, just a yard. Boy, they spotted it way up there. He got 13 of the 14 they needed, so bring up a fourth down. And Bryant Gamble ended up making that stop on that draw. They'll punt the ball away. This will be the third punt of the night. Nice snap. Turning, goes into the sideline and out of bounds somewhere across the 40-yard line. Starting up now at the 40, at the 41. That's the Aggie end of the field. Still walking up at the 43. At the 43-yard line, that'll be only a 28-yard punt. Well, this one was a shank, Dave. He shanked it back to the left, and it went out of bounds. Only a hard kick gives the Aggies position at the 43. Out on the field, 3.58 to go in the third. The Aggies up 21-17. They've got the ball when we come back. This is the Texas Field Network. First down at 10, and has got the ball at their 43. Thanks a lot to Michael Barnes for the update. He'll be on the scoreboard show in the first half of the postgame tonight. Don't forget, we've got the extended postgame on all home games. We'll be listening in as R.C. Slocum talks to the members of the uh, media. Also, some players will be featured, and we'll also have an interview with Gary Nord. Coach. Right now, I'm sure he'd be very happy to have this ball, even though he'd be on the short end. His team's playing. And it's got the ball with three wides on the left. It'll be a shotgun formation. A running back to the left of Ferris. And a split to the right as the snap throws over the middle, and it's off the hands of the intended receiver on the far side. Hash mark at the UTEP 40 to Bethel Johnson incomplete. Second down and 10 coming up. One of the few errant throws from tonight from Mark Ferris. This ball behind Bethel. He got a hand on it, and it bounced off one of the UTEP defenders. But it's incomplete. Come back second and 10. Defense will be that time. D.J. Walker and also Derek Walker. He's a senior out of Here's the second and ten. Three wides on this side. Dwayne Goins, Taylor, and I think that's uh, Bethel. No wide on the top to the short side. Running back to the right, inside handoff. Now keeper by Ferris. Tries to jump over a man. He does and leaps forward to the 50. Gets seven. It'll be third and three when we come back. This is the play we saw from Ferris uh, last week uh, where he took it for the touchdown on the bootleg after the, the uh, fake to Whitaker. Uh, he was open for a while. They closed on it pretty quickly, and he'll pick up seven. Ferguson have how many receptions tonight? Just that one? Just the one for six yards today for the touchdown. touchdown. They're working on him tonight. Third down, three at midfield. Two wides on the top, one's in the slot. Two wides on the bottom. Now a man in motion. 
coming back to the open side. Inside handoff goes to Whitaker, falls forward as he's hit around the angles and has a first down. From the 50, he goes to the 45 and a half. First down, Texas A&M. Aggies convert on the third. They are now seven out of 10 on third down conversions. They came into the ball game tonight at A&M. 12 out of 27 on thirds. This is that delayed draw where Whitaker set in the backfield, just stands up, and Ferris takes him the ball, and uh, the blocking was excellent at the point of attack. Whitaker picks up the first. Clock will hit 250 as they get ready to snap the ball. First down and 10 at the UTAP 45-yard line. Goins in motion back toward the middle of the field. Hand off of the uh, backfield, and it's thrown down. Will be, uh, it'll be Whitaker. Whitaker is thrown down for a two-yard loss back at the 47. That went nowhere. And Whitaker's turning around asking where was the block of it. Uh, they got Ferguson coming back into the lineup as Goins will leave. Whitaker came in tonight with 17 carries and 111 yards. He was 13 of 71 against Notre Dame, 4 for 40 against Wyoming. Aggies have the ball at the UTEP 47. They need near the 35 for a first down. Three wides again at the top. Shotgun with a running back to the right. Split in on the left. Inside handoff, nope, and on his knees, they throw the ball, hit as he's throwing as Ferris tried to hit his receiver over there, and on his knees, that ball went in and out of his hands. And he intended to get the ball that time to Ferguson. Ferguson had slipped down, looked up, the ball was right on top of him, and now we face third down at 12 at the UTEP 47-yard line, and the clock stops at 2.05 in the third quarter. A&M's regained the lead, 21-17, on a two-yard run by Toombs. We went 12 plays and 70 yards on that drive. Here goes Bethel to the uh, top. Two wides on the bottom. Running back on either side of Ferris as he will start this play from a shotgun. Has the snap, drops back to the Aggie. 45 steps up, throws, intercepted by UTEP. And they'll get a return here to their own 43 by Sam Singleton. His first interception of the season. And that will be the... Fourth interception they have turned in this year. So they've got the ball now at their 43. The Aggies throw the interception, the second thrown by Ferris this year, and Davey threw that into a crowd. Yeah, he did. He couldn't. Uh, this was a timing pattern. This is one of the few times this year I've seen it looked like Mark made up his mind before he saw the play. He's done such a good job of reading defenses. This one he threw into coverage. Uh, linebackers right now. It's Jared Morris and Brian Gamble on the inside backers. Perez under running backs. Steps back. Now he's sacked at the 35-yard line. Brian Gamble came clean. Good shock from the uh, backside. Perez is lucky to hold on to this football. Good lick by Gamble. 17 on 17. They'll lose eight yards on that back to the 35-yard line. Gamble has now his third sack of the season. He's number four in tackles coming into the ball game. They face a third down. They say 17, but it'll be third down and about 18. Out of a shotgun, running back either side of Perez. Slot to the left, has the ball, wanting to throw. He does, and it's knocked away out of the tight end's hands. Knocked away by Sean Weston. Knocked it away, and it's incomplete. Now it's going to be a third down play coming up at 18. Ball will be at the 35-yard line. Natkin, the tight end that time, Dave, had drawn a crowd. Yeah, good coverage by the Aggies. They're starting to, to do a better job of reading uh, reading Perez and locating where he's trying to throw the ball. Aggies will go into their dime defense and send two defensive linemen to the sideline. They got to get the ball to the Aggie 47-yard line. Man goes in motion under center. Aggies, a lot of pressure. They throw the ball incomplete in and out of the hands of Allen Ray. Set up on the right side of the 35. He started to run before he had the ball. They don't convert. The interception stalled out of drive, and now they'll have to punt. Aggies threw an INT. Got the ball, did uh, UTEP at the Aggie 43. Had a sack, and then it just fell apart. And they end up having to punt it here on fourth down. And that Return men for the Aggies will be back at the Aggie 25. That was the first uh, turnover of the ball game, Dave, that interception by Ferris. 110 to go on the third. Well-played game. 21 to 17 is our score. The Aggies have the lead. And the putter. Glenn Beard waiting on the snap. Blocked it! 
Been blocked by Jay Brooks. It's on the ground. The Aggies are going to get it at the one. It's going to be recovered by Adam Black. It was blocked by Jay Brooks. Brooks coming in on the block. Took a perfect angle. Took the ball right off the punter's foot. Knocked it back into the territory, in the deep territory. Then the, the punter went back and moved it even deeper into their own territory. The Aggies finally pick it up and will take possession inside the two-yard line. One and a half first and goal. Here comes Ferris. So they block the punt with 101. In the third, they have a chance to make it a 28-17 ball game. It's the uh, power formation, three tights. Stacy Jones the full, and Tomes the tail. Tomes, touchdown over the right side. Tripped up as he hit the goal line. Tomes, his second touchdown of the night. What a huge play. Special teams can make the difference in these tight ball games. Jay Brooks comes and blocks the punt, gives the Aggie offense the ball on the UTEP two-yard line. One play, Tomes takes it in to give the Aggies a 10-point lead with the point to come. Kitchens getting it lined up. Chance Pierce is the deep snapper. Wes Bonovich will hold. Kitchens trying to make it 28 to 17 with 58 seconds to go on the third. His extra point is on the board. Oh, Jackson, the Aggies now have made it 28 to 17. And we are back in a minute. With less than a minute to go in the third, this is Texas Aggie football. Going to call that a two-yard run. Aggies have just kicked off, and where is the football? It goes out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Only time that we had a miscue off of the uh, foot of Cody Skates. He kicked that one. Oh, Derek Lechler looks like Lechler is running under to pick up the tee anyway. And they will bring the ball out to the 35-yard line. So the Aggies have taken a 28-17 lead with 53 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Dave, that was a quick one to, uh, to uh, that was a, right there. That was a one-play drive of two yards, of course, set up by the blocked punt. Jay Brooks blocked it. The Aggies get the ball on the two-yard line. The big rumble takes it in from two yards out. Aggies lead at 28-17. 58 seconds left in the third quarter. Perez with his offense at his own 35, first and 10. Ball the middle of the field. Got the snap. Hands off to the tailback. Hits the line of scrimmage. Goes to the line of scrimmage. And down he goes. Ron Edwards, nine tackles in the first two games. Former high school All-American now playing as a senior out of Houston Fine Forest made that stop. It doesn't fit in that last drive. We've gone 58 yards for a touchdown. 73, 61, 80. He went 53. That was a field goal drive. And he had a 70-yard drive. And the last one goes two yards. Yeah, it counts the same, though. <laughs> Shotgun for Perez with a running back to his right. Slot to the right. Flanker left. Play action, steps up, throws the ball, caught at the 44-yard line, and a flag down at the 40. Not enough for a first down. Was that Bonovich on the tackle? He was close by. Let's go down on the field. We've got Tom Turbyville. Tom. Tell you what, Dave, some of the uh, fans that are here, or a group of fans that are here, are guests of not only the AM Athletic Department, but a group called Aggies Up All Night on campus. And what they do is raise money for the Children's Miracle Network of the Brazos Valley, and they have taken some of the miracle kids from Bryan and College Station and their parents and their families, and they're all guests at the football game here tonight. Aggies Up All Night, the Athletic Department, guests with the Children's Miracle Network kids. They're having a great time now. 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They're unraveling a penalty down there. What do you got, Dave? Holding call against A&M is what, they, what the preliminary signal was. It looks like they're trying to, UTEP's trying to decide whether or not to take the penalty. I'm sure the they play will. would get the ball to the 44-yard line. They would uh, be facing a, what, third down and one? Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Okay, they get the first down that way. Okay, I don't know what the discussion was. It looked like that was pretty either. easy. Yeah, yeah, that one's very simple. Aggie fans, there's a new Texas A&M football video screen saver, 30 full motion clips from Texas A&M football. 
$20 to order. Call 1-800-427-9422. Visit AggielandScreensavers.com on the web. First and 10 at the UTEP 45. Perez, play action, rolling to his right. He's going deep. He's got Mays. Aggies trying to get the intercept. They won't down at the 10. And a flag goes down. And I don't believe that one. I don't believe what I just saw. Terrence Keel went up playing. to intercept the ball. They're playing the ball. They are absolutely playing the ball, and they threw a flag down the 13-yard line. Play was made at the 10. Oh, goodness. They're going to replay this one. We're going to take a look at it. Have a chance to get a, uh, another look at it as he rolls to his right. Everybody's playing the ball. I don't understand that at all. Keel and Weston that are both there playing the football and the flag fell. Wow. Move the ball down to the 40-yard line in A&M territory for UTEP. Five seconds left in the third quarter. <laughs> Boy, RC has given him one four down here on the sideline. He, you know he's mad, but he's got his hand in his left, uh, his hat rather in his left hand. He's still yelling at him. I don't blame him. That was a bad call. 40-yard line, first and 10. That's the Aggie 40 on a defensive pass interference call. That was bogus. Perez, under center, drops back, throws the ball, caught for a first down inside the 30 and rolls all the way down to the... Natkin, the tight end. Natkin, nice catch there after he caught the ball. He continued to move that body down the run out of time of the third and we're going to the fourth it will be UTEP's ball down and 10 at the Aggie 22 on the first play of the fourth quarter 28-17 Texas A&M leading UTEP this is the Texas Aggie radio network and they are driving again and they will run a play from the shotgun tight end right open sides to the left they've got three wides put a man in motion Mays is the motion man Perez drops back, steps up, under pressure, now runs to his right, caught at the line of scrimmage, leaps forward as he breaks the tackle, goes to the 20. Perez to the 20-yard line. It will be second and seven coming, Dave. Here are your third quarter stats brought to you by University Bookstores of College Station. On the web, go to shopaggieland.com. First downs, 18 for UTEP, 17 for the Aggies. Rushing yards, 150 A&M, 71 for the Miners. 123 via the air for A&M, 193 UTEP. Total offense, 273 for the Aggies, 264 for UTEP. They need to net the Aggie 12. They've got second down and eight at the 20. Single setback, three wides again to the left. Perez with pressure. He is under pressure. He throws the ball. Why not intentional grounding? Come on. No oh, flags. Man. Now there is a flag, I think. There's something on the turf at the 22. There's the flag. Should be intentional grounding, and why the referee Mike Weir didn't make that call, I have no idea. It was right in front of him. I mean, the quarterback is in the grass, an A&M player, and then he throws the football off balance. That's obviously intentional grounding. There it is. There you go. Thank you. They got it. Late, late, late flag. <laughs> Man. Afterthought. Boy. Now they're going to have a discussion. You know, it took the official on the far side to come in and explain that to the referee. Now here's what intentional grounding is. Here it is. Intentional grounding against the offense. That's a spot foul. It's third down. Back at the 30-yard line. Not to mention there wasn't a, a minor receiver within 15 yards of that uh, where the pass landed. So now it'll be third down and 18, is that right? Yeah, third and 18 from back at the 30. 14, 11 to go at the ball game, and the Aggies up 28 to 17. Shotgun running back to the right, three wides to the left, throw the ball, partially deflected, caught, tackle, missed, now down to the 19-yard line. The initial tackle was missed over on the far side of the field. And that was by Christian Rodriguez. Then they get the ball down to the 18. They are short of a first down by six yards. Well, let's see. It looks like they'll go for it here on fourth down and, and six. Nope, they're going to attempt the field goal. Field goal. All right. 
Here's a 37-yarder, Ricky Bishop, earlier tonight. This one would be spotted at the 26. It's a 36-yard effort. He is now two out of two between 30 and 39. Here's the field goal. Looked like that was wide right, and it, it was. was. Missed it from 36. Hit one at 37, missed this one at 30. The first miss he's had this year between 30 and 39. So turn the ball over, give it back to your Aggies. They'll have it at the 20-yard line, first down and 10. A&M with 13 remaining in this ball game. Has a 28-17 lead. Good luck have you on the radio tonight. Next uh, game, the next action for the Aggies won't be until the 30th of September when they entertain Texas Tech. Right now, that game is set at 1 o'clock. Would not be surprised if that didn't get moved for TV, but that's just a guess. Nothing's been decided at this moment. First down and 10 with an eye formation behind Ferris. Ferris barking signals. Has the ball. Hands it off. We've got five, six, seven, eight yards. That's going to be up to the 30. He got 10. That'll be a first down across the 30-yard line for Joe Weber running hard right up the middle. Had a spin at about the five-yard pickup uh, area. Broke a tackle. Took it out over the 30. Picked up an extra five. We got uh, 283 now in total offense. They are working with 277. They have 18 first downs. 7-11 on third downs tonight. And they'll come out and show the eye. Wouldn't be at all surprised if we just don't try to keep it on the ground for a while. Off to Toombs. He fights for about three. It took about one, two, three of those white jerseys with the orange pants to bring him down after about a two and a half pickup. That was a first down and ten. Now they'll face a second down and about seven and a half coming up. They've got to get out just past the 40 for a first down. As we told you uh, in the pregame show, this uh, Miners defensive line is a little bit undersized. 245, 250, 265, 270. So the Aggies think they have the opportunity to run straight at them. And on two plays, they picked up 13 yards. Tango Bacali back in at the left tackle. Right tackle is Andre Brooks. Don't think we've made any changes at the guards. Running back on each side. They're going to throw one out in the flats to the left side. The Weber bounces off one man like he was nothing. He's got a bunch out to midfield. He just went about 19 yards to the Aggie 49-yard line. And they're going to give him the 48. 18 yards, that right? Six gain out the 48-yard line. Ferris with great composure. He sits back in the pocket. He can't find anybody downfield, and uh, he, so he finds Weber, who's his safety valve, out in the left flat, and Weber did the rest for that 16-yard gain, breaking a couple of tackles, putting it out almost to midfield at the 48. It's on the Aggie side of the 50. The Aggies show a shotgun, three wides right, one to the left. The left side is the short side of the formation, an inside handoff. Weber broke a tackle behind the line, breaks another tackle. He's at the 45-40. Two men on him as he goes across the 40 to the 37-yard line. Joe Weber. Joe Weber is a man with a mission. He just won't go down. They just don't arm tackling. They can't bring him down with one person. He'll pick up another first down. That's going to be his 12th carry, and he has 90 yards on the night. Trying to get 100 yards. He's just come off the fields. Uh, he come off and get a well-deserved blow, and Whitaker will replace him at the tailback. Delatore is the tight end on the left side. Single setback is Whitaker. Bethel Johnson on this side. You got Goins and Ferguson at the top. Goins went in motion. Play action. They fake the reverse. They throw the ball to Delatore at the 30, at the 25. Lowers his head. He's down to the 20. Michael Delatore, his second reception tonight. The big tight end just caught that one, and he rumbled over a couple of the miners on his way to a first down carry. Mark Ferris is just cool as a cucumber. This is that uh, that motion that they've used all night and with several different variations. The fake to the... Uh, to the wide receiver on the reverse, play action, and then he hides the ball so well. He was wide open out in the flat was Ferris. He found the big tight end out in the flat, and he rumbles down to the 20-yard line. Thank you, Jones goes wide to the left side, short side, however, the formation. Ferguson, Goins, and Johnson are the three wides on this side out of a shotgun. Whitaker's the running back to the left to Ferris, has the snap, throws the ball. It will be caught inside the 20. Down at about the 16-yard line, Dwayne Goins caught the ball. Dwayne's uh, been active in this uh, offense tonight. How many reps? His first reception, he's run the ball what, at least once or twice. Yeah, he's got one reception and one run. So a pickup of four. 
Second down and six. The Aggies need the 10. I kind of got the impression that may have broken their spirit after they got down there, then they missed the field goal, and the Aggies now have come marching back here. Keep looking for a spirit breaker, and we may have done that when they failed to get an inside handoff. Fake. Ferris carries to the 10, get out of bounds. And he's tripped as he hits the sideline. And he first down to the UTEP 8, first and goal, AM at the minor eight yard line. Well, the Aggies have used that play action bootleg very, very well tonight. I think that's the second time that Ferris has used it. This time he'll pick up the first down, had a big gain on it when he ran it the first time as well. Ferris is 17 of 25 throwing the uh, football tonight, and he has 160 yards. The Aggies now 345 in total. Oh, here's Ferguson way to the top. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Bethel Johnson split in on the right side. Here is Toombs as he leans forward with a man around his ankles. That's about the only way you can get him down. You try to get him high. And you are wasting your time. The spot will be near the six, so it's second and goal for the Aggies at the UTEP six-yard line. And I told you coming into the broadcast tonight, they've been giving up 453 yards, had given it up that average in their first two ball games, while mounting 377 as an average on the offensive side. Mickey Jones and Ferguson are at the top. Taylor and Johnson at the bottom. Lone running back. Ferris throws toward the end zone. Knocked down at the goal line. Close to an interception there. That'll be third down and goal at the seven. The Aggies ahead 28 to 17. 9.45 to go in the game. They are knocking on the door on a third down and goal at the seven yard line. Trying to hit that slant pattern to Ferguson and Kamar Jackson, the linebacker, saw this one, read it very, very well. And the Aggies dodged a bullet there. I don't think Mark Ferris saw Jackson coming into the throwing lane. And he could have gone a long way had he been able to hold on to that one. Ferris has thrown an interception tonight. Johnson, Taylor, and Toombs, wide outs on the left side. You got uh, Weber and Ferguson. Nobody in the backfield. Here is Ferris on a keeper. He'll get inside the five. And somebody trying to pull his head off as he goes across the five to about the four-yard line, maybe the three. Now you're going to be facing fourth and goal at the three-yard line. Quarterback draw, Mark Ferris, three from and about the seven. He'll pick up about three and a half and need three and a half to, for the touchdown, and they're going to go for the field goal. 28 to 17 right now with 9.20 remaining in the ball game, and we will apparently kick a field goal. Which will hold at the 16-yard line, so it'll be a 26-yard effort. As a miss earlier tonight at the 37. So at the 16, 26, the angle is back to the left. Here snaps, it's put down by Botovich. The kick is up and it's good from 26 yards out. And it makes it a 31 to 17 ball game with 8.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. This is Texas Aggie football. And about ready to kick off. Kicking off with the wind at his back and this will be Cody Skates. Teed up at the 35-yard line. This game and the Oklahoma State game and the Texas game, I think, that are all still uh, still going in the Big 12 tonight. Here's the kickoff, end under end. The classic Cruz kick's going to go into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. They'll let that one sail through, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Texas A&M golf coach Bob Ellis is retiring at the end of this school year. In his honor, they're playing the Bob Ellis Bulldog Bash. There's a roast next Saturday night, September 23rd, and a golf scramble Sunday, September 24th. Call this number for more information if you want to take part. 979-845-3289. Hope you can participate next Saturday night in the roast and uh, then play golf on Sunday. First down and 10, UTEP. They made a change at quarterback. Wesley Phillips, a junior out of Williamsville, New York, has come in and replaced the starter, Rocky Perez. Play action, rolling to his right, now running for his life, got a block. Ty Warren had his sent him in the crosshairs, but now he'll turn it up the field. Good block on Warren, back behind the line as he was closing on Phillips. Got to the 23, three-yard pickup. Second down and seven will be coming. Eight and a half remaining in the ball game. Evan Peroni finally brought uh, Wesley Phillips down. Played in uh, just one game so far this year. Played four games last year. He is three of five throwing the ball with no interceptions and 20 yards. 
So the second down coming up at the 23. Aggies have gone up 31 to 17. Four touchdowns and a field goal in the ball game tonight. Slot left, split into the right, under center Phillips. Two running backs behind him. Offset back there, drops back to the 15. Now he runs again for his life. Gonna run for a first down, won't get there. He'll be dropped to the 28 yard line. He'll be too shy, it'll be third down and two coming up. Christian Rodriguez and Cornelius Anthony. Anthony, the number one tackler into the ball game tonight. Senior out of Missouri City at 21 tackles and a sack in the first two outings this year. So a third down and two for UTEP with their second quarterback of the night. Clock has just rolled under 7.30. Third down and two, eye slot left, tight end. And they will roll to the right. Phillips hits the sideline, throws for a first down across the 40 to the Aggie 43-yard line. What a nice running throw by Phillips and a great catch on that sideline as they will go to nap one of the tight ends. As that roll out to the right, Time, uh, initial pressure right up the middle, but he bought some time by moving uh, that pocket out to the right side, then found Knapp right on the sideline, picks up enough for the first down out at the 43-yard uh, line in UTEP territory. Ty Warren will check out. Clemens is back in. Peroni stays in there. Stephen Young. You know, Sandwards out over the ball, 96 not 90. First down and 10. Under center, Phillips, single setback is Sherman Austin. And it's a draw to the backfield, goes to Austin. He stutter steps and gets a yard to the 44-yard line. It'll be second down and nine for UTEP. And now we're under seven. Flemings made the stop on Sherman Austin. Here comes Brian Gamble back out on the field, and Jared Mills, the Brownwood product, will check. Sammy Davis, Botovich, Jason Glenn, Christian Rodriguez, Terrence Keel. Cornelius Anthony, Flemings, Edwards, Peroni. All 11 guys out there right now. And here again to the line of scrimmage, the Miami single setback. Three wides this side, two on the other side. They are moving right to left on your radio dial. Out of the shotgun, they will throw the ball. And that one's been picked by Brian Gamble. Picked it at the UTEP 48-yard line. Gamble showed great quickness. He read this quarterback. Just beautifully, Wesley Phillips looking at his receiver trying to cross over the middle. Gamble got right in the middle of the throwing lane. He'll pick it off inside UTEP territory. The Aggies will have it first and 10 when we come back. 6-12 remaining in the game, and the Aggies get an INT for Brian Gamble with 6-12 remaining. Have the lead to the Ags, 31 to 17. Timeout on the field. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. Pendants tonight, 69 184. We had 69 2 something. First ball game, so both crowds over 69,000. Aggies have the lead, 31-17. Brian Gamble just got an interception, his first uh, since the Texas game on this field last year, his first uh, for this season. And he picked it at the uh, UTEP 49-yard line. And it was Wesley Phillips. Quarterback makes you wonder if Perez maybe got hurt uh, on the previous series because Perez, their senior quarterback, has started for three years. Ferris will stay in as the Aggie quarterback. He's got Whitaker as a running back to his left. The Aggies will go from a shotgun with three wides on the right. Drops back, steps up. He's throwing deep. He's got Bethel Johnson stretching out incomplete at the 20, just off his fingertips. Overthrew him a little bit back to this near sideline. It'll be second down and 10 again at the UTEP 48-yard line. Bethel running the corner route, and he had three or four steps on D.J. Walker. Just a little bit overthrown. I'm sure Ferris will look at that one in the film and say, boy, that's one I should have hit him with. Second and 10. That yeah, ball's closer, I guess, to the 49. Running back, left and right of Ferris. Two wides on this side, one to the other side. Drops back to his 42. They're trying to set up a screen. They do to Toombs, 50, 45, 40. Third, and out at the 20, back start to 30 yard line, then rolls to the 29. They're gonna spot him at the 30, however. <laughs> Boy, once he gets started, he is scary. How would you like to have 270 pounds running that fast at you if you're a DB? Wow. Big what if, he, if he keeps on going, he's probably going to have to have those officers of the day down there. you got to because I can't <laughs> stop myself. He gets rolling, man. I'm telling you, that's called <laughs> momentum. <laughs> he's, down, he's down to the 30, know, first I, I, and 10. I'm going to watch that one tomorrow. Here's 
First down and 10 at the 30. He rolled all the way down to the 26, but they say his knee touchdown. Here's a shotgun, an inside handoff. We'll go to think it's Whitaker again. Whitaker gets maybe two to the 28-yard line. Time remaining is 5.30. We've got a 31 to 17 lead over UTEP in the fourth quarter here at Kyle Field. 69,184 at the ball game tonight. Carried for two. So it's second down and eight coming up. Bear stays in at the quarterback position. The Aggies looking for more points. And they got Maurice Harris now in at the running back on the left side. They got three wides on this side. The top of the formation is. Uh, Jones, and here's a uh, play action. Now a naked roll to the left side, and a pick up to the 24 by Mark Ferris. He hit a man, then rolled across the 25 to the 24. Play action, and started out to the left side with really only Mickey Jones over there to block for him, and Mickey was downfield. Here comes Toombs back out on the field. It's that play action uh, bootleg that uh, Ferris has used very successfully tonight. The last time he did it, he picked up the first down uh, on the way to the field goal. This time he'll pick up about, uh, about five yards. Uh, inside the 25-yard line. Four minutes of 33, 32, 31. Now 30 seconds remaining. Shotgun and two running backs. Left and right to Mark Ferris, the Aggie QB. Two wides on the right. And again, he goes on that naked roll. He's going to keep the ball at the 20. Jumps by a man, and he's across the 10. He's inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. First and goal, the Aggies. Ferris on the last two carries. Gets us inside the 10, knocking on the door once more tonight. Called his own number two plays in a row, and uh, those two picked up the first down. Not only picked up the first down, but will set the Aggies up inside the uh, UTEP 10-yard line first and goal. Ball spotted, hash mark to the left. Lonnie Madison has checked into the lineup now for the Aggies at a tight end position. Fred Lively stays in. He's come back in out that left tackle position for uh, Tango McCauley, and I lines up behind Ferris. Under center, he hands off to Maurice Harris. And he will carry down to the one. Inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Well, that's the guy that came on the uh, scene last week. Maurice Harris, 5'8", 185, sophomore squadsman. Carried eight times, 54 yards against Wyoming. Here comes Taylor. And Mickey Jones out on the field. Here comes Bethel Johnson off the field. And he's kind of rubbing his eyes as he comes back to the sideline. Harris gives the Aggies some quality depth at the tailback position. You know, you're not afraid to put him there. He's effective. Right guard, Taylor Whitley. We've got Andre Brooks as the right tackle. Man in motion. Roll now to the right. Throw toward the end zone. Here's Ferguson, and it's in and out of his hands at the goal line. Had it at the one. He was wrapped up and knocked down. The ball knocked away by D.J. Walker. And D.J. Walker almost held on to this one, and there was nothing between him and the Aggie goal line except green. Third down and goal coming up at the two. Clock stops on the incomplete at 318. That's time remaining in the ball game. Don't forget the extended post game tonight. After all home games. Here we go with the third down and two. The power formation, the three tight ends. And the eye. Jones the fullback, Toombs the tailback. No secret what you're going to do. Give it to Toombs. Bounces off one man. Fights for the zone. He's got the zone. Touchdown, Jamar. Boy, it looks like they had him stopped about two yard, about the two-yard line. Toombs just won't be stopped. He bounced outside and then carried a couple of miners with him into the end zone and hit pay dirt. It's another multi-touchdown game for Toombs. That's his third tonight. That's five now on the season. Makes it a 37-17 ball game before the extra point. Kitchens has been a letter perfect tonight. Botovich will hold again. The deep snapper is Chance Pierce. A man from Brownwood, another one of the Brownwood connections on this ball club for R.C. Slocum. Ball extra point is up, and the extra point is good. The Aggies make it 38-17 to with 3.14 until the end of the game. Let's go down to Tom Turbyville. Tom? Yeah, Dave, uh, you were asking about Rocky Perez. Doesn't appear that along with He's got three multi-touchdown games. Now he's got four in his last five regular season games, does Toombs. Four of his last five, he's got multi-TD games. He's got three here tonight. He's now scored five times this year. Don't forget the R.C. Slocum call-in show next Thursday night from Wings and more. You have questions about Aggie football, you have the opportunity to talk to the coach for the ninth year in a row. 
Here's the telephone number, 1-800-927-9979. 1-800-927-9979. You can hear it on the Internet, or you can hear it on uh, many of these same stations on the Aggie Radio Network. Or you can join us live in Wings and More, the campus location. The Aggies trying to move, and apparently the ball, ball fell off fell the tee down. again. They're going to have to have somebody come up and hold it. I think it's going to be Sammy Davis who's going to come over and try to hold it on the tee for Cody Skates. So three minutes and 14 ticks remaining to run off the clock. Got a great crowd here tonight. Next opportunity is Texas Tech, September 30th. Scheduled for 1 o'clock right now. Use the Verizon toll-free ticket hotline at 1-888-99-AGGIE. Sammy Davis will hold it. End under end. Cruz kick in the end zone. Bobbles it. Holds on to it. Takes the knee. Bring it out to the 20. 3.08 remaining in the ball game. If you go uh, back to their... Uh, OU against this ball club with three plays, 17 yards, five plays, 46 yards, six plays, 53 yards, 10 plays, 47 yards, two plays, 12 yards, nine plays, 31 yards, Dave. They had everything. All those drives were inside the, uh, with less one, inside the uh, 50. Then they had their longest drive of the night was five. Uh, plays for 77 yards. That was OU against this UTEP team. Yeah, six turnovers, and a lot of those uh, gave Oklahoma great field position. So 38-17 to 17 right now. They've turned it over one, one time uh, tonight, the interception by Gamble. They'll keep it on the ground from the 20, first and 10 to the 21-yard line. Wesley Phillips stays in the lineup. Down to the field, Tom Turbyville. He is Tom down there. If uh, Aggie fans got a little bit of an extra thrill while they were kissing their date after that last score, they looked at the Jumbotron and saw that Stanford had taken a 6 to nothing lead on Texas, oh, so the right. scoreboard's looking good in both ways. <laughs> that game and the Oklahoma State game are still going. We'll have Michael Barnes on the scoreboard. Second down, nine. And here's Phillips on a play action. And he had the ball batted right back in his face by Jason Glenn, and now a flag goes down. Maybe a holding call against the UTEP. It will be third down and nine. If select that the penalty is against New Depp, the Aggies probably won't take it. Looked like he was trying to, Phillips was trying to hit the crossing pattern to the tight end. A little bit open that time, but uh, Jason Glenn batted it back, and it will be a call that will go against New Depp. Colby Freeman is warming up on the sideline now for the Aggies. We have 2.30 remaining in the ball game. Aggies up 38 to 17. UTEP will go back to 1-2. and two. The Aggies, meanwhile, will go to 2-1 and one on the season. Next weekend is an off, uh, off day. Then we'll play uh, right in the row all the way through Oklahoma before we get an open Holding spot. on the offense. That penalty is yeah, declined. Third down. Aggies don't want it. They'll take the play. A batted uh, pass by Jason Penn. And bring up third down in that same nine yards. Two wides on this side, one's in a slot. Single set by. They got two wides, but one in close on the right side. They're moving right to left on your radio dial. Wesley Phillips hops back inside his 15. Sacked at the 14-yard line as he steps up. No, at the 16. They'll get him back at the 16-yard line. He will lose on the play about five yards. So a sack for the Aggies. And now a punt coming up for UTEP. And Colby Freeman warming up here on the sideline. That was an all-out blitz by the Aggies. They brought seven people and just uh, matched up one-to-one -one on the four receivers in the pattern. And uh, it was successful. They got the sack, and they forced UTEP to punt two minutes on this ball game. 25-second clock is rocking under 20 now. It's down to 15. As much time off the uh, clock as possible. Game clock is at 147. And the uh, punter, Beard, standing back. They're going to let this thing go down that to zero two. and get penalized. Yeah, they'll take the penalty. Delay of game called here to run the game clock down to 137. Again, the R.C. Slocum call-in show is 1-800-927-9979 on Thursday nights from 7 until 8. It's on the Internet. It's on many of these same stations. It's on the air again 7 until 8 o'clock on Thursdays. Call him with your questions. 1-800-927-9979.
Takes the snap in the end zone. Steps up to the goal line, puts his foot in the ball, driving Taylor back here, and he takes it at his own 48. Starts the return to the left, cuts it back in. Ashmark 40. He's at the 30, has the punter to beat. Now caught from the backside at the 17-yard line. Well, Chris Taylor is electric on these punt returns. The first, he gets past that first wave, and he, and he makes would-be tacklers miss so well once he gets rolling. The last man catches him here, and with a little bit of help from somebody coming up from it from behind, but he still rolls it down inside the 20-yard line. 34-yard punt return by Chris Taylor. On a 41-yard punt. Time now, 122. Colby Freeman will check in. He'll run the offense for the last 122. And here are the Aggies. First down and 10 at the... UTEP 17, the inside handoff will come back to the right side. That's Harris. He gets it back to the 15. So Maurice Harris carries to the 15 for about two. That'll be second down at eight. The clock now showing 110 and working. Checking into the lineup now for Texas A&M. We've got a lot of different people. Joey Perot is out there. He's a reserve tight end. Also coming in right now, Fred Spiller, another one of the tight ends. As we make some changes, center out over the ball is James uh, Milkovic. Freshman redshirt out of uh, Ailey Belsgen. Out of a shotgun, Freeman. Inside handoff. No, he kept the ball himself. He's trying to get to the end zone, and Freeman touchdown. Punch it in from the 15. The inside fake went to Maurice Harris. He was going left and running here by Colby. Freeman gets it in on a 15-yard run. And Aggies get it up above 40 now with 44 points showing on the board. 39 seconds, Dave, remaining in the game. And that's that dimension that uh, Colby Freeman brings to this offense. Ferris ran that same play very successfully, but Freeman with just a little bit more speed, and he avoids a couple of tackles and takes it in for the touchdown on that play-action bootleg. And now the extra point. Uh, we're going to have to use a timeout. Both teams, by the way, had all three timeouts remaining here with 39 seconds to go. Aggies have made it 44 to 17. Just got a 15-yard run going back to his right. Colby Freeman, his second touchdown of the uh, season. Now we've got enough people out on the field, and Bonovich is ready to take the snap from Chance Pierce. He does, spots it down. Here is the kick by Kitchens, and it's good. We'll take a timeout, going to the network break. Aggies up now 45-17. to 17. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. Ball's been kicked following the Aggie touchdown. Picked up at the nine. I think that's Sherman Austin. He has a return on down the far side of Ashmark across the 20 to the 24, maybe 25 yard line. 33 seconds remaining in the game. One point now, fans, for those of you listening on the radio here in the stadium at home or wherever, is that Oklahoma then had the, the uh, benefit of six turnovers by UTEP in the uh, ball game in which they uh, won over UTEP. Somewhere in front of me here, I've got that final score. 55-14. 55-14. Yeah, there were six turnovers, and I mentioned earlier, they had only one drive that was a drive of any distance. They went six times less than 53 yards to score. They had one drive that was 77 yards. The Aggies now made it 45-17, to an eye formation. Maybe a play left in the ball game as they hand off, and they will go to one of the reserve running backs, and he will carry from the 25 out to about the 28-yard line. So now time is working at now 19 seconds, and that likely will be the last play of the ballgame. Don't think UTEP will snap again. 